Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the James Webb Telescope. Christmas definitely came on December 25th this year, especially for those of you out there who are space enthusiasts. And you know that's because the launch of the James Webb Telescope finally happened on Christmas Day itself. If you don't know, the James Webb Telescope is the largest and most powerful telescope ever developed, with its creation beginning back in 1996. The telescope was created with help from NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, and the European Space Agency, and it cost around $500 million dollars to make. The launch of the telescope has been long awaited as it was delayed more times than cyberpunk. Other than the fact that we all had to wait with bated breath, the reason this launch is so exciting is because for the next several decades, this telescope will show us parts of the universe that were previously unseeable to us. We'll get a closer look at and a chance to explore other planets, we'll see the birth of stars, and it might even give us a peek into how the very first galaxies were formed. Basically, this thing might show us more about the universe than we've ever had access access to before. It is truly magnificent. Right now, the telescope is passing through its most crucial phase, which is the unfurling of the Sun Protective Shield, and if all goes well, which it seems to be thanks to the ground team working on it every step of the way, we are very close to seeing some of the most amazing space discoveries in human history. In our number 9 spot today, we have the malaria vaccine. In October of last year, the World Health Organization made an important announcement when they approved the world's very first malaria vaccine for kids. There's a couple reasons why this deserved a spot on today's list. The first one being because it is the first vaccine against any parasitic disease, which is a step forward for the world of medicine. But more importantly, this vaccine is crucial because malaria is still one of the most dangerous diseases on the entire planet, and it's one that takes the lives of over half a million people annually. The new vaccine cost over 750 million US dollars to make, and it began being created and tested all the way back in 1987, so it certainly was not an easy road by any means. This new vaccine is meant to fight against the deadliest of the five malaria pathogens, and the medicine is given through four different injections. Right now, it is estimated that this shot could prevent about 5.3 million malaria cases every single year. In our number eight spot today, we have Mars. February of 2021 was a big month for Mars, which is hilarious to say, but also very true. In that time, there were three different missions that arrived to the red planet, and this wasn't really a coincidence. It was just a few different space agencies taking advantage of the Earth-Mars orbit alignment, which only happens once every 26 months. First, the UAE's HOPE orbiter reached the planet, which is aimed to study the past, present, and future of the Mars climate by orbiting the planet. This will hopefully show us any patterns or changes on Mars, whether they're daily, monthly, or yearly. Then, the CNSA Tianwen-1 began surveying the surface of the planet from orbit before the Zhirong rover touched down on the planet to actually move around the surface. And then finally, we have the Perseverance rover from NASA, which will spend the next few years digging into the soil and rock to collect samples of the planet for us to study. With all of these Mars visits, one of the most important things we learned, or really tested, is how we can fly through the brutal and harsh Martian atmosphere. Basically, the Ingenuity helicopter that came on the mission with Perseverance helps by scouting out the area ahead to highlight any potential hazards or objects that might be of interest. I had to include this quote from an article on indiatoday.in where I found some of this information because it really sums up this whole point so beautifully. They wrote, quote, this year on Mars, the UAE learned how to orbit, China learned how to land, and NASA learned how to fly. In our number seven spot today, we have animal evolution. It isn't necessarily surprising for me to say that humans are having an impact on animal evolution. That much is kind of to be expected, especially since we tend to treat the Earth like we're the only ones who live on it. But 2021 showed us some pretty clear examples of just how we are affecting this change. Studies have now shown a sharp rise in the populations of African elephants without tusks. Why? Well, because of poaching, of course. Poachers killed so many elephants with tusks, especially during the Mozambican Civil War from 1977 to 1992, which left the females without tusks more likely to pass on their genes. Another more indirect way that humans are impacting animal evolution is with the changes that we are experiencing in the climate. A study from Trends in Ecology and Evolution has shown that bats are growing to have bigger wings and rabbits are growing to have longer ears, and these are both likely to dissipate more heat into the surrounding 
surrounding area and cool them down. A study in Science Advances suggested that 77 species of birds found in a remote patch of the Amazon rainforest were found to weigh less and have longer wings, most likely as a result of rising temperatures as well as the changes in the rainfall pattern. In our number six spot today, we have the early humans. This scientific breakthrough involves one of the earliest human species, Neanderthals. Some very cool paleontologists from Madrid created a 3D model of the ear structure of Neanderthals. That alone is just an unbelievable sentence. Scientists in 2021 recreated the ear structures of an early human species that lived 130,000 to 40,000 years ago. And that's not even the wild, crazy discovery. I love science. So they created these 3D models and it made them then realize that Neanderthals may have had the ability to speak and hear just like Homo sapiens, which is of course the modern human species. Every year we uncover more and more data and material that challenges what we once thought we knew about the early humans. It is so fascinating and interesting to watch it all unfold. In our number five spot today, we have early humans part two. Remember when I just said two seconds ago that every year we learn more that changes what we once believed about the early humans and the history of humans? Well, here's another one. In September of 2021, a study dated footprints that were found in the White Sands National Park, and they were said to be from 21,000 to 23,000 years old. For those of you sitting there being like, well, how could they possibly know how old footprints are? These prints, referred to as the ghost prints, were dated by using radiocarbon dating of the dried ditch grass seeds that were found both above and below the footprints. The reason why this dating was important is because prior to this, many archaeologists placed the start of human life in the Americas at around 13,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age, and this was based on tools that were found in New Mexico. The paper that published this information, which, just for transparency, has been debated by some, suggests that humans actually lived on the continent during the Ice Age, which of course changes a lot. A month after this find, there was a study published in Nature that showed evidence of Vikings living in North America earlier than what was once thought. The researchers got to this conclusion by examining cut wood and finding samples of a cosmic ray event that happened in 993 CE. This is definitely a couple of discoveries that are still unfolding and being examined and looked into further, but it's all very interesting. In our number four spot today, we have quantum computing. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is a discovery that I know very little about, if I even know anything on the topic at all, so bear with me as I try to do my best to explain. To my understanding, quantum computers do, in seconds, what the best supercomputers would take days or weeks to complete and process. These quantum computers use the laws of quantum physics, which is the thing I know nothing about, to get these incredible processing capabilities, which completely changes the game for a multitude of things like meteorology, cybersecurity, national defense, the list just goes on. Okay, so how does this relate to a 2021 moment? Well, in November of last year, IBM launched the 127 Quibit Eagle, which is the most powerful quantum processor ever. Then a company called Quantinum launched a cloud-based cybersecurity platform called Quantum Origin. Meanwhile, I'm in 2022, still trying to figure out what the f the cloud is. This is said to set the stage for quantum computing to start rapidly evolving, so I guess I'm gonna need to catch up. In our number three spot today, we have Heart of Titanium. With the understanding that heart disease takes an estimated 17.9 million lives around the world every year, it makes a lot of sense that for over 50 years, doctors have been trying to find a way to build an artificial heart, and 2021 saw us getting the closest we've ever been. An Australian research team called Bivacor built a titanium heart that uses something called spinning disc technology. Basically, it of course doesn't operate like a normal human heart, but instead it tries to one-up and improve the regular old evolution-perfected human heart and give it an even better way to pump blood around the body. It has a circular pump that is suspended between two magnets that lives inside of this titanium heart. Right now, there has yet to be a full human trial, which makes sense. These things take a lot of time, and it's certainly better not to rush them. The promising news, though, is that the artificial heart has been successful so far in both scenarios in animal trials, as well as when used temporarily on heart transplant patients. In our number two spot today, we have coral reefs. Whether you believe in climate change or not, we can all agree that in the last few decades or so, we've seen a lot of natural disasters. From forest fires to droughts and heat waves, maybe this is a result of climate change, maybe this is just how things go, I'm not here to argue with you, I'm just here to tell you about how this uptick in natural disasters affects our planet. More specifically, our coral reefs. These kinds of disasters and just the general climate of the earth has an impact on the temperature of the oceans. This change in temperature has caused the reefs, which we forget are living things, to cast out this kind of symbiotic algae that helps them survive, which is then causing the reefs to bleach and then die. In 2021, a huge report was published from 
the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network that showed that the oceans had lost about 14% of their reefs in the last decade. Then another study was later published that showed that there was less than 2% of the Great Barrier Reef that was able to escape bleaching since 1998. And this was all published just months after a different study that suggested that half of all coral reefs have been lost since the 1950s. Unfortunately, our coral reefs are in a lot of danger right now, and it affects more than just the ecology of the ocean. It will also impact us as humans. It impacts fisheries, tourism, coastal developments. I'm not saying that all of these are good reasons to care, but if they're the ones that get someone interested, then I guess it's something worth mentioning. In our number one spot today, we have the fireball. On February 28th, 2021, reports came pouring in from across the UK of an unusual streak of light that was seen in the sky. These reports were far behind the UK's Fireball Alliance, though, as their cameras had already picked up the signal and they were already in the midst of estimating its landing site. That's right, this streak of light was a meteor. It's a remnant of our early solar system that has been flying through space at unbelievable speeds until it came down through our atmosphere and ended its long, awesome journey scattered in a bunch of pieces across rural Gloucestershire. Teams were sent out to be responsible for the recovery of the extraterrestrial material, which was found in a family's driveway as well as in a sheep's field nearby. This meteorite is a rare specimen known as primitive carbonaceous chondrite, which is said to contain materials that have been essentially unaltered since the formation of the solar system four and a half billion years ago. The pieces of this meteorite can give us insights into the building blocks of the planets, and it can potentially give us clues as to how the Earth came to be this wonderful planet that possesses all of the resources necessary to sustain human life. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Stellar Sea Cow. Stellar indeed. Okay, the Stellar Sea Cow was named after George Wilhelm Steller, who discovered this massive creature in 1741 during the Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition. They found her right after the crew became shipwrecked. What a lovely surprise to an otherwise horrible situation. They were around over 2.6 million years ago, and they were no match for humans. They only swam about a meter deep, and once humans came into the picture with, you know, hunting and aggression and everything, they were quite easy to hunt. George Steller commented that the animals had an uncommon love for their families, which in turn made it even easier for us to hunt them. Considering the one year gestation period, the species just couldn't reproduce fast enough to keep up with our hunting. But this list, we have a little hope now, don't we? Scientists were able to sequence the genome, which could mean we could see the creature again one day, hopefugly. The answer may lie right now in the DNA of a dugong. Dugongs are the cow of the sea. You know what, they're great. Let's have all the cows of all seas back immediately. Number nine, passenger pigeons. The passenger pigeon once ruled the skies over Canada as recently as the 19th century. Billions of these bright orange birds would just paint the skies. They would fly in flocks so large, it would block out the sun for a short amount of time. Isn't that beautiful? It's like some Lion King stuff right there. But only a few decades passed and passenger pigeons are now no more. So what happened? Well, the very last passenger pigeon, her name was Martha. She passed away in the Cincinnati Zoo back in 1914. So we took a look at her DNA to see if Martha held any secrets to her extinction. They discovered Martha had a low genetic diversity for such a growing population. Natural selection and hunting obviously just eliminated the coolest looking bird out there by far. A little different than the pigeons we have today, that's for sure. The last one died in 1914, but in 2019, paleontologists found remains of the pigeon protected in indigenous lands in Canada, up in Northwest Territories. They blended passenger pigeon DNA with Archaeopteryx dinosaur DNA. Yeah, we're bringing back pigeons with a hint Oh, dinosaur. What could go wrong? Number eight, the woolly mammoth. It was announced only months ago that a team of scientists and entrepreneurs over at a company called Colossal are planning to bring back, are planning to bring the woolly mammoth back to life. That's just the thing we need right now in this world. Out of all the problems, we're like, you know what could solve it? The woolly mammoth, for sure. That'll bring jobs back. The Siberian tundra thousands of years ago was once full of these woolly mammoths, but climate change began to slow them down just a little bit. And humans also needed food, so that surely didn't help. These guys provided warmth and, well, look at them, obviously, a lot of food. Genetics company Colossal raised over $15 million to try and bring this thing back to life. Honestly, I hope it works, but then, I mean, now what? All these things are great scientifically, but it's like, and then what? Number seven, the dodo bird. Speaking of the devil, this is, we're definitely gonna eat these guys. Dodo birds were once big and beautiful. These flightless ground nesting birds once filled the island of Meritius, located in the Indian Ocean. They had massive talons, they were big gray and blue, and they didn't have any natural predator, which is pretty sweet. They didn't have one until 
we came along. Around 1507, the island was discovered by Portuguese sailors and, well, the rest is history. They were the easiest bird to hunt, hence the phrase dead as a dodo. They weren't just loved by sailors either. We're not just 100% here to blame, you know? Monkeys, rats, pigs, any animal that made its way to the island easily had their eggs for lunch. So yeah, it didn't take a long time for the dodo bird population to be completely wiped out. The last dodo was hunted in 1681, but can we bring back the dodo bird? Are we doing it? I think we're gonna do it. Scientists found an extremely well-preserved dodo skeleton back in 2007, so we may have a chance at picking some DNA apart here. A research facility near Melbourne, Australia is currently trying to use pigeon genes to bring this bird back to life. I mean, I'm all for the idea of bringing back an animal. Scientifically, that's a feat in itself, but do we really think nobody's gonna make dodo chicken wings? I'm just saying. That's just a problem waiting to happen. Number six, Pyrenean Ibex. The last Pyrenean Ibex was a female named Celia. A falling tree sadly killed her in 2000. She was a subspecies of the Spanish Ibex and the Pyrenean Ibex were native to the Pyrenees Mountains on the border of Spain and France, as her name hints towards. Back in the medieval ages though, their population was reduced drastically to an endangered level. So it wasn't just recently, it was way back, you know, because of, again, Hi, we got hungry. They were all over the place and knights and swords and bows and armies to feed. They were hunted down, sadly. Disease spread by humans also played an important role in their demise during this time. The Pyrenean Ibex was successfully cloned and brought back from extinction for seven minutes. So we actually did this one. DNA from the last living lady was implanted in the womb of a domestic goat. Lung complications are why the clone didn't last, but listen to what I just said. They made a clone. Seven minutes is a start. I think I can handle a clone of myself for seven minutes, and then after that, I'm tapping out. Number five, Tasmanian tiger. Once native to Australia, the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylakine, it was a massive carnivorous marsupial that went extinct around the 1930s. Major factors here, as you guessed, climate change, hunting, and its genetic diversity wasn't all too great. It was sad on one hand because these beautiful creatures disappeared so recently, but it's recent enough that we have a shot at bringing them back. So we're like, ah, oh, but maybe, maybe. Yeah, imagine looking outside and seeing this thing on your front yard. Are we ready for this? Specimens still remain preserved in jars. Thank God for those jars. About time we open those things up, right? All those jar guys are like, hmm, finally, pull this one out. Already we have some of the Tasmanian tiger genes present after scientists inserted them into a mouse fetus. The Australian Museum has been working hard to bring this beast back to life. They're only still lacking the DNA to fully recreate it. So if you have any jars of Tasmanian tiger parts, you know, help us out, hit those thumbs. Number four, the great auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the great auk would grow to 30 inches long and its tiny wings would be only used to swim. Had little tiny, little wings. The wings were much smaller. They were about 13 centimeters long, little flappy arms. No wonder they couldn't fly. Look at these things, oh my God. They were cute, but obviously they were quite defenseless. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting, and it just happened to be where most of these great ox were hanging out. Newfoundland looked like the iceberg from Club Penguin, and then we just rolled in and we're like, ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, we are so hungry. It was packed, so they rapidly declined, and by 1950, the last two known specimens were hunted by a single fisherman on Eldie Island just off the coast of Iceland. Scientists plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils or preserved organs. Remember those jars of organs always coming in handy. They plan on editing their DNA in the closest living species, which is now the razor-billed auk. The organization Revive and Restore is behind the wheel on this one, and I'm hoping they pull through. Number three, the moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago. Moa were these flightless birds, massive, might I add, and archeologists first discovered its fossil in a cave. Its flesh and everything was still attached. That's the gross part. These ancient birds would reach about five feet tall, and when you think of dinosaurs, you probably think that's quite petite in comparison. These birds stopped flying right after the dinosaurs went extinct. Interesting timing. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University in Canberra, these birds safely roamed the land after they didn't need to make these daring dino escapes in the sky. They walked around, got fat, and would hang out in caves. Honestly, pretty ideal. Phillips says this is an advantage when it comes to birds and evolution because wings, be it big or small, kill energy. So it might seem a little depressing to watch a creature lose the ability to fly, but it's because they're eating good, they're comfortable now. Scientists have now found more moa DNA from ancient eggshells, so it's possible that we may see these fatties soar the skies once again. Number two, megatherium. 
AKA giant ground sloths. That's a bit of a nicer name. Yeah, sloths, let's bring those back. Wait, they're already here, hmm? I'm confused, Taylor. Sloths used to be a lot bigger than we think. We often look at them now for being so slow and silly. The movie Ice Age or Zootopia, they sure didn't help their case. Now, of course, the giant ground sloth is closely related to our modern three-toed sloth, but luckily for us, today's sloths aren't that big. They're not the same size as an elephant, which is pretty sweet. That would be a horror film. If a giant elephant-sized sloth started to climb that tree, slowly, might I add, ugh, I'd be sick. We may be able to bring this one back, although they died off 8,000 years ago. DNA samples were extracted from their hair remains, so the next step now is to develop a fetus in an artificial womb. That's the hard part. That's where science and technology might just do the rest. But as of right now, we just we've got a pile of hair. We're like, maybe. And finally, number one, the gastric brooding frog. I'm a big fan of frogs and toads, all that stuff. Except for when they hatch eggs out of their back. That's arguably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. We'll maybe show you after, maybe, I don't know. These gastric brooding frogs would swallow their eggs and then hatch them out of their mouth. So if you watch them give birth in reverse, it would be pretty confusing. That would be a horror film. They went extinct back in 1983, but scientists have figured out how to implant these dead cells into a fresh egg from an entirely different frog species. Let's just hope these new ones aren't born out of your back. Kicking off the list at number 10, SS Garisoba. We'll kick off this deep sea part three with a shipwreck. Whenever it comes to underwater stuff, I think I have thalassophobia. These were hard to look at and look into, rather. I got chills looking at these photos, honestly. The SS Garisoba was once a thriving British cargo ship. Back in 1941, during World War II, the cargo ship was en route, returning from India carrying a pretty nice amount of silver. It was a lot of silver, an, an alarming amount of silver. A storm rolled in, so the captain made a quick decision knowing what was on board to avoid the rough waters as much as possible, so the ship changed direction and started heading towards Ireland. Again, this was 1941 during World War II, so not a great time to head that direction. The ship was spotted by a German plane and a U-boat later claimed the lives of the SS Garisopa's 85 passengers. News traveled quickly and once the war came to an end, a few divers checked out the area. There was nothing. Now fast forward to 2011, Odyssey Marines team found the ship. 14,000 feet below the surface, surrounded by just pure darkness. The team kept around 80% of the treasure found and the rest went to Her Majesty's treasury. In case you were wondering, there was around $150 million worth of treasure found. Yeah, if you can do it, then go grab it. Sure. It's like one of those things where someone's like, hey, you want $150 million? Go into this deep, dark, scary thing. Would you do it? No, my answer is no. Number nine, Ram's Horn Squid. This little squishy dude was discovered around 3,000 feet below the surface and scientists cannot stop talking about the way he moves. Look at him. He looks like a really slow submarine, which is pretty amazing when you think about the uh, Schmitz Ocean ROV that's down there getting this footage. It's also a submarine. How funny is that? He's looking at him. He's looking at them. They're like, what? He's like, what? They're all just both wiggling, trying to balance each other out. His body acts like a submarine's ballast does. Fluids and gases shift around, and in return, this little guy can float up and down whilst wiggling his toes. Look at him. I never thought a squid would be cute until now. Didn't know that was a possibility, yet here we are. Part three, most amazing, cute squid. Number eight, Catherine Sullivan. Not really a deep sea discovery, but I mean, when talking about all these discoveries, you gotta ask, who goes down there? Who does the thing, right? When an entertainer wins an Oscar, Emmy, Tony, and Grammy, we call that an EGOT. Fun little title only a handful of artists can claim. But what about somebody who's been to both space and the deepest part of our earth? What do we call them? Well, so far, them is just one individual. Her name's Catherine Sullivan, the former NASA astronaut decided to change up directions for this trip, so she joined Victor Viscavo on one of his eight trips to the deepest known point on Earth. July 7th, 2020, Catherine Sullivan officially became the first person to do both. Go out there and then down there. That's crazy. Your Fitbit's like, what are you doing? What's happening? How many steps is this? What can we call this impressive title? He got a deep got? A deep got go-getter? A deep go-getter? Yeah, you're a deep go-getter. That sounds awful. We're doing our best here. Maybe part four will have a fun name. It's impressive. It's so impressive my ears hurt thinking about all these communities. Bravo. Hats off to you. Number seven, holy grail of shipwrecks. Okay, back to shipwrecks. It's hard to read up on these shipwrecks sometimes, well, all the time, because on one hand, it's fascinating to discover parts of our history we thought was once lost forever. Of course, we find tons of treasure that's always fun and noteworthy, but we're also exploring the scene of a horrible wreck every single time. It's quite grim, not on paper. In 1708, the San Jose Galleon was heading to Spain from Colombia, but when the British attacked, the San Jose sank to the ocean floor and nearly all 600 crew members lost their lives. Yeah, dark history. In 2015, the ship was found with around 17 to 22 billion dollars worth of plundered valuables. See, back in the 80s, Gloca Mora Company claimed they had found the ship. Colombia was lacking the financial and technological resources to dive down and actually get it, so they agreed to give GMC 35% of the findings. In 1984, they then handed the rights over to an American
American company, Sea Search Armada. Then the game changed. Since then, and still to this day, legal battles have been unfolding over this lost treasure. COVID delayed it quite a bit, so if you can hold your breath for a really long time, it's still waiting there. No one knows what to do with it yet. I'm like, see ya, be right back. Number six, the Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail and it claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. How tragic is that? Only 20 minutes and it was gone. The Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628, and it was once considered a high-tech warship, even referred to as spectacular. So what happened? How did this thing sink in 20 minutes? That's crazy. Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard and it swayed a bit. The second rush of wind sank it. There's gotta be more. There was a crowd around and everything to send it off, but the 64 bronze cannons that were installed during the rushed process of building the ship were too heavy. That's why it sank. And the lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the wood. Carvings centered around the king at the time, King Gustav II. So when the wreck was rediscovered in 1961, 95% of the wood was still intact. So it still tells the story. Number five, under the ice. This dark discovery was pretty recent. Recent as in October, 2021, the Hakon Project is one I would never sign up for personally, but I'm surprised it's taken this long to do something along these lines. The Hagon Project is a group of around 30 scientists. They teamed up to send a deep sea robot 13,000 feet below the icy surface of the Arctic Ocean. This was the first time we got to see the hidden volcanic vents that have been hiding for centuries, because obviously it's that deep and that cold, and now we have the resources and people who are brave enough to go and camp out in the Arctic to go explore. That's crazy. Number four, ancient Greek shipwreck. I remember hearing about this back in 2018, so I'm excited I get to throw it on a list. The oldest shipwreck discovered in the Black Sea. It looks like it sank 50 years ago, but actually this ship is from 400 BC. It's an ancient Greek trading vessel and it's not very large, but somehow this thing is very mighty. 2,400 years later, over a mile below the surface, the lack of oxygen again actually preserved this ship. That's why it looks not ancient. John Adams, principal investigator with the Black Sea Marine Archaeology Project, describes the findings as something he never thought was even possible. Yeah, more than fair. That long ago, like we're still trying to figure out the pyramids. We're like, oh my God, this thing's just chilling there the whole time. Just a fish is staring at it. This discovery changed what we knew about seafaring in the ancient world. The oldest intact shipwreck known to mankind. That's not a bad title. Another 2,000 years will find nothing but plastic on the bottom of our oceans. Number three, underwater river. We've heard about this one at some point, I'm sure, but how is this even a real thing? How is this possible? What are we looking at? What is this? Back in 2016, researchers working in the Black Sea found these very strong currents. Currents of water flowing at the bottom of the sea like its own river, almost. And this 115 foot deep river was on land instead of, well, under the Black Sea, it would be ranked number six in the world for the amount of volume alone that's constantly rushing through it. So pretty impressive. The river carries heavy sediments along the seafloor, hence why it makes those grooves over time. And yeah, over time, those currents carve out their own path and now it's massive and extremely powerful and unstoppable. But luckily for us, you need a deep sea rover to take a good look. So you're not gonna fall in anytime soon. Number two, deep waste. I mentioned some deep sea plastic on this channel before, but this 2021 discovery is just a new low, pun intended. Right off the coast of LA, hiding around 4,000 feet below the ocean's surface, sitting there for quite a long time were literal barrels of garbage, just waste. The plume of evil coming off of these things also, it looks like a nuclear wasteland, probably because it is a literal nuclear wasteland. How horrible is that? There weren't 30 or 40 of these barrels also, in case you're wondering, there were thousands. Around 27,000 were found. Two weeks of searching with subs, what a sad expedition that must have been, oh my. These barrels were dropping into the ocean around 1947 to around 1961, that's the window of time. You'd think after barrel 5,000, somebody would be like, like, ah, this feels wrong. I don't know. And finally, number one beneath a glacier. We had to end this part three on some new footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. And this glacier also, in case you're wondering, is the size of Florida. So if you're imagining like a big ice cube, it's a bit bigger than that, just a little bit. This is like finding the bottom of a continent. This thing is massive. And we set a rover underneath all of it. How scary is that? If it were to collapse, our sea levels would rise 10 feet, just to give you an idea of how big it is. And in 2019, researchers drilled 2,300 feet right through the Thwaites Glacier and dropped a robot with a camera down and then they just roamed around. And they saw this. Hold your breath. This is the first time we've ever seen the grounding zone of a massive glacier. There's only one meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. Could you go down there? I don't think I could. I would swim underneath it and pretend like I'm lifting it up, you know? Just kidding. I wouldn't even get into the submarine to go down this hole. Not a chance. Also, can we not drill through a glacier the size of Florida? Just sounds like a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe leave this project alone. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret underground community. 
Believe it or not, but there is a group of urban explorers that like to hang out in the Paris catacombs. They call themselves the Cataphiles, and they sneak into the tunnels, evade the police, and then go exploring. In fact, they have claimed a number of sections as their own, marking it with murals and graffiti. Not only that, but they have found secret ways to get into the catacombs. Plus, they've started mapping the whole place out so that other explorers don't get lost. Only problem is that this is a very dangerous hobby. Since they are entering restricted areas in the catacombs, they have to watch out for crumbling walls, falling rocks, even pools of water. I don't know about you, but I prefer to spend my time with the living and not the dead. In our ninth spot, we have the Lost Girl. In 2005, a group of teens illegally snuck into the catacombs on New Year's. Sadly, they all didn't make it out alive. They all were drinking and having a blast when one of their friends, Masha, wandered off alone. When they finally realized she had disappeared, they went out looking for her but couldn't find her. No one knew what happened to her until four months later. That's when a group of boys were exploring the catacombs when they stumbled upon her frozen body. Since she was drunk, she wandered off to another section of the catacombs and then got lost and froze to death. How heartbreaking. Coming in at number 8, we have Philibel Aspel. Philibel Aspel was a doorkeeper at the Val de Grace Hospital during the French Revolution. And the hotel actually had a staircase located in the courtyard that would lead to the catacombs. So one night in November of 1793, Philibel descended into the catacombs to retrieve a bottle of liquor stored down there. However, he only brought one candle with him and it was not enough to light the way. Eventually, it blew out and he was down there in pitch black. Being semi-intoxicated, he stumbled around the catacombs lost. For 11 years, no one knew what happened to him. That was until 1804 when his body was found. He was identified by the hospital key ring hanging from his belt. Moving on to number 7, we have the Whispering Walls. A number of explorers have claimed that no one should ever be in the Paris catacombs after midnight. For if you are, then the walls will begin to speak. People have claimed to have heard disembodied voices coming from the catacombs. These voices confuse them and try to persuade them to travel deeper and deeper into the catacombs until you're in too far that you're lost and you can't escape. Actually, fun fact, they use this as inspiration for the movie As Above, So Below, which takes place in the Paris catacombs. In our sixth spot today, we have the camera system. In 2004, a group of French police explored some of the restricted areas of the Paris catacombs. And that's when they discovered something truly terrifying. First, they found a PA system that when triggered would play sounds of guard dogs barking. Then they found a full-on bar, living area, workshop, lounge, and cinema with space to fit 20 people. Like what? Not only that, but whoever created this little home setup was stealing other people's electricity from above. The creepiest part is that they had a full-on security camera set up, and the police soon realized that they were being watched. They left to get a bigger team to further investigate the area, but by the time they got back, everything was gone. The only thing left was a note that read, don't search. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Dekil. Dekil is the name of a very mysterious man. We don't know much about him, but we do know that he was a veteran of the French army. And he was also an artist. In fact, he created a number of sculptures for the catacombs. However, this eventually led to his death. During the construction of one of his sculptures, a part of it fell and crushed him completely. It's said that to this day, his soul wanders the catacombs. In fact, people have seen him down there before. In our fourth spot today, we have the Crypt of Passions. The Crypt of Passions, located in the ossuary, is a pillar that is covered in skulls to the point that it's just completely concealed. The skulls end up forming what looks like a barrel, which is creepy for a number of reasons. Just take in, those are real skulls. You're surrounded by people who used to be living and most of them died in tragic ways. And then their bones were used for an art display. A number of people who have visited this area in the catacombs have reported feeling very uneasy around the Crypt of Passion. It's believed that some of the souls that were placed there have not found peace. I mean, in some cultures, they believe that a proper burial must be done with a tomb marker or else the soul will never be able to rest or go to the afterlife. 
However, that was not possible at the time. The catacombs were built because grave overcrowding was a serious issue back then, among other things. In our third spot today, we have these scratch marks. There's this really creepy area in the Paris catacombs where it's just a wall of scratches. Like it looks as if bodies rose from the dead and tried to scratch their way out. It's a creepy touch to the place, that's for sure. Moving on to number two, we have the lost tape. Now I'm sure all of you have heard about this urban legend before, and in fact it also inspired the movie As Above So Below. And it might not even be a legend, it might be real, but to this day, no one knows. Once upon a time in 1990, a weird dusty camcorder was discovered in the catacombs. The camera appeared to have been there for quite some time, so they decided to inspect it. What was found on it was very disturbing. The video was of an unidentified male explorer wandering around the catacombs. While down there, we see him interacting with the skulls around him. But then something spooks the man and he ends up growing paranoid and panicked. At one point, he drops the camera and just runs away. Sadly, he never made it out alive. This tape contains the final moments of his life. And in our number one spot today, we have the criminals. In 2017, it was discovered that a group of robbers used the catacombs to break into an apartment. Basically, they figured out that the catacombs were right under an apartment vault. So they drilled their way in through the limestone and entered the apartment to steal over 300 bottles of vintage wine. In total, they valued at close to 250,000 euros. Isn't that insane? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the earthquake detector. In 132 AD, a man named Zhang Hen was able to create the first earthquake detector called the seismoscope. Far ahead of its time, this creation was incredibly accurate and is actually comparable in efficiency to those that we use now. Apparently, in 138, this tool detected an earthquake that was a ways away, and at the time, nobody believed it and dismissed the warning. A few days later, a messenger arrived and asked for help, which confirmed that this thing really did accurately detect an earthquake and where it was coming from. Researchers still aren't sure exactly how it works, which is so crazy, but I guess some things are just meant to be a mystery. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Gangkar Puen Sum. This mountain is the largest mountain that has been unclimbed by humans and stands at a height of 7,570 meters or 24,836 feet. Studies and measurements of this mountain started 100 years ago in 1922 but it wasn't until much more recently that we began to acquire actually accurate details about it. The name of the mountain means White Peak of the Three Spiritual Brothers, which becomes an important part of why this mountain remains unclimbed. In 1983, the mountain became open for mountaineering, but between 1985 and 1986, there were four separate expeditions who tried to summit it and failed. Part of the reason why these expeditions failed were because there were disputes on the location and there was just inaccurate information, so the first group who tried to summit it couldn't even find the mountain at all. In 1994, the climbing of mountains in Bhutan higher than 6,000 meters became prohibited due to spiritual beliefs, and in 2003, mountaineering became prohibited entirely. This is why the mountain remains unsummited, and while I'm sure it would be an amazing expedition for climbers, who knows what is going on up there in terms of ecology due to it being left alone. In our number 8 spot today, we have the ancient seabed. A seabed that was once located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean was found buried hundreds of miles beneath China. This slab of rock once found its home at the top of the lithosphere, which is the outermost layer of the Earth. How did it get hundreds of miles below China? Well, it got pushed down by a neighboring tectonic plate in what is called a subduction event. This discovery was so notable because scientists had never detected a subduction event so deep within the surface of the planet. When they found this rock slab, it was still continuing its descent towards the mantle of the Earth. I wonder if one day it will come back to the surface again. In our number 7 spot today, we have a gibbon skull. Gibbons are a type of ape that are often characterized by their swinging ability coupled with their loud, bright calls, and the 8th century Chinese poet Li Bei described their voices as they swung past the Yangtze River, but here's the thing. Today, there are no gibbons that live anywhere near the river. Also, the gibbons that exist now have different fur patterns from the ones that are often depicted in classical Chinese paintings. This has led experts to believe that there must have been another kind of gibbon that has now vanished, and physical evidence of this gibbon might have turned up in the most unexpected place. 
a tomb. This tomb, which was built for the grandmother of the first emperor of China nearly 2,300 years ago, contained a skull and a jawbone so distinct that scientists believed they must have belonged to a member of this now extinct gibbon genus. Many surviving gibbon species are now facing extinction, so it is likely that there were others in the past who unfortunately faced the same kind of fate. In our number 6 spot today, we have the green gel. This is a discovery that was made by the U-22 rover, which is currently exploring our wonderful moon. On lunar day 8 last year, which began on July 25th, the rover was doing its thing, finding its way through an area that was filled with a bunch of small impact craters. On July 28th, as the team here on Earth was preparing to power down the rover for its little midday nap, which is meant to protect the machine from high temperatures and radiation from the sun, one member of the team was checking over some images that were taken by the rover's main camera, and they spotted a small crater that seemed like it contained some sort of material that had a color and a sort of luster that was significantly different from the lunar area surrounding it. The team then changed the plans they had for the rover and decided that instead of going west, which was next on the schedule, they would instead take a little detour to check out this mystery material. The rover carefully made its way over to the crater and examined it with both its visible and near infrared spectrometer, which is a thing that detects lights that are scattered or reflected off of a material which helps to reveal what they're made up of. For a while, no one knew exactly exactly what the substance was, and it was only being described as being gel-like and being a weird color, but after almost a year of more research, it was finally identified. It's rock. More specifically, rock that was melted together, most likely in the heat of impact from a meteorite. It's insane that something like that created a dark green glistening impact melt, but it's also very cool. I'm just glad that this is one mystery that we got to the bottom of. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Gobi Desert Structure. This is one discovery that had conspiracy theorists' minds absolutely swirling. About a decade ago, someone was searching through some Google Maps images when they found a mysterious array of structures and patterns that appeared to be etched into the surface of the Gobi Desert, which is, of course, located in China. The structures are reminiscent of geoliths, but they are seemingly much more modern and newly created. The speculation of what this structure could be or why it was created went wild with people saying that they were street maps of American cities or, or messages either to or from some sort of extraterrestrials. The list of bizarre theories just goes on. While this is still sort of conspiracy sounding, this is likely the most reasonable explanation explanation for what these structures are, and that is that these structures are used to help calibrate China's spy and radar satellites. To be fair, this does make a lot of sense, and I don't have any other ideas on what it could be for. So. In our number 4 spot today, we have the droughts. Ancient drawings and writings were found covering the walls of the Dayu Cave, which is located in central China, and a lot of them detail different droughts and such that were experienced during the time of their writing. According to these drawings, people would come to the cave for either water or to pray for rain in times of drought. The writings reveal some of the horrors that the people of the time experienced while going through these periods of drought, including severe starvation, social instability, and conflict between government and citizens. While these cave writings show us a difficult time in history, researchers say that the stalagmites that were also found in the cave might show a grim prediction for the future. Since these are formed by dripping water and they form sort of rings, like how trees do, and these rings can give us insights into different things. Based on the patterns of these rings, scientists were able to corroborate the things that the cave writings were saying, but they were also able to make a grim prediction for the future, which is that unfortunately the region may again see one of these catastrophic droughts this time in the late 2030s. In our number 3 spot today, we have the ruins. Taking over our number 3 spot today, we have the most recent discovery on this list. While archaeologists were digging at one of the most important archaeological sites in China just earlier this year, they found a bronze altar as well as a dragon with a pig's nose, among many other things in a couple of the sacrificial pits that are seen at this site. In fact, they said the findings were made in sacrificial pits 7 and 8, to which I have to ask, how many are there? There. Another highlight of the new finds was a bronze box with a tortoise shaped lid. Inside, this box contained jade artifacts and even traces of silk fabric were found around it. These finds are so astonishing because every little piece gives us so much insight into the buried secrets of the ancient Chinese civilization. In our number 2 spot today, we have an ancient mystery. While excavating a tomb in China, the team discovered the skeleton of a young man that was riddled with wounds, giving clues as to how he died. The man is estimated to have been about 20 
25 years old at the time of his death, and it is thought that he was harmed and then thrown into the Tomb Raider shaft while still alive, which is absolutely gruesome. It is believed that this crime took place between 640 and 680 AD. It appears as though he wasn't a thief because the shaft had begun to be refilled with soil by the time of his death, so we really aren't sure why this young man met this cruel fate. As a true crime enthusiast myself, this is absolutely fascinating, and I wish we could find some answers to bring this guy's story full circle. But sometimes these things are just destined to stay a secret. In our number one spot today, we have the palace. Archaeologists and researchers were certainly baffled a few years ago when they were digging beneath the foundation of the Li Fang Pagoda, which sits on Li Fang Mountain. Well, digging isn't exactly the right word. To be honest, there was a huge stone or boulder that weighed over 1,500 pounds that was lifted away, which then revealed a stone tablet. Once this tablet was lifted, it revealed a huge underground palace. Inside this palace, researchers found many hidden treasures that included a Buddhist statue, bronze mirrors, coins, and there was also a rusty iron case that was found during the initial discovery, which researchers believe held many relics. The pagoda that sat on top of this hidden palace was first completed in 976 AD, so it is thought that this area remained untouched from at least then until its modern discovery. Number 10, Dragon of Death. We all know that millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth before they became extinct. Scientists are constantly working to put together the fossils and remains that they have found and discover new species. One of the ones that was discovered recently has been described as the Dragon of Death. It was a flying reptile like a pterodactyl that is described as having been the size of a bus. Fully extended, its wings measured 30 feet from one tip to the other, and they were apparently as tall as giraffes. The leader on the project said that its size defies the limits of our biological understanding. The remains were discovered in the mountains of Argentina, and the specimen is apparently around 86 million years old, being preserved within the rocks. It's incredible to think of the sheer size of some species of dinosaurs and to imagine them compared to ourselves. With all the talk of scientists wanting to bring certain animal species back from extinction, it may not be long until we have a real life Jurassic Park. Number 9. Haunted Idols Burial sites often fall victim to grave robberies, things being stolen from the dead and defenseless. In May of this year, a group stole 16 statues from a 300 year old temple, but what they stole caused them to regret their decision. After less than a week, 14 of the 16 stolen statues reappeared on the doorstep of the temple's chief priest, returned in fine condition. The thieves left a letter of confession for stealing the statues and said that they were returning them because they felt they had become cursed by the idols. The note said, We have not been able to sleep, eat, and live peacefully. We are fed up with the scary dreams and are returning your valuables. Having the idols around seemed to put a haunted curse on the thieves, though we can only guess whether the statues were totally haunted or were simply punishing the thieves for their actions. Reportedly cursed objects are nothing new and pop up all over the place, so it's probably best if you just keep your hands to yourself. Number 8. Skeleton When people pass away, they are often remembered fondly by their family and descendants, arranging the funeral and getting their affairs in order. So what happens when no one is around to even know that someone has passed away? When they have no close family or friends who will notice that they've stopped answering their messages? Well, early this year, a team of construction workers in New York spotted something strange through a window. They saw what they believed to be a human skeleton. And it turns out that it was. It was a 54-year-old woman who had been living in the apartment when she died of currently undetermined causes. The woman's sisters had tried to come into contact with her, but had only filled out a missing persons report, not knowing that she was still inside her home. It's believed by doctors that the woman had been dead for almost two years before being discovered, her body decomposing inside the home. Number 7. Sea Creature With around 80% of the ocean still unexplored, we can only leave it up to our imaginations to wonder what sort of creatures might be living in the deep dark depths. Even the sea creatures that we are aware of and have studied are pretty freaky to look at sometimes. Every so often, a fisherman or other explorer will pull up something totally strange, and this happened earlier this year. A fisherman posted a picture to Instagram of a bizarre alien-looking fish that he had pulled up 
on his line. The post went viral, the fish being swollen and pink with large green eyes, torn fins, and strange markings that made it look like it had received surgery. The ocean seems to be full of terrifying creatures that we really can't explain, and I personally live in fear of the day when they all decide to come up to the surface and grow legs. Number 6. Dead Woman's Ditch in February of this year, numerous reports started coming in of a ghost that could be found at a place called Dead Woman's Ditch. The ditch is in Somerset in the United Kingdom and is named after a woman that was killed by her husband after he discovered that she had fallen pregnant from his brother. People say that the area is now potentially haunted by her spirit, being a type of ghost that is known as a woman in white. Apparently this particular ghost is not very polite and has been reported to swear at people walking by telling them to F off. Reports have started ramping up this year which prompted a ghost investigation crew to look into the claims. People say that they don't just hear her voice but have also seen an apparition of the woman alongside the road, usually described as wearing long white clothing. But when they turn their heads to get a second look, she's gone, leaving behind only her crude warnings. Number 5. Robot Consciousness One fear that many people share is that of technology taking over the world. There are many sci-fi futuristic movies that depict the idea of robots rising up against their masters and taking over the human race. With technology becoming more advanced at an exponential rate, it may not be long before this fantasy becomes a reality. Many researchers have been putting work into creating AI or artificial intelligence that can think and hold conversations on their own. One main example being Sophia the Robot, who you may know from her appearances on talk shows, able to come up with conversational responses all on her own. This year, a group of Colombian engineers created a robot that was able to imagine itself and what it looked like, the robot having its own idea of self-image. They placed it in a room surrounded by cameras and they watched as the robot explored its own body and how it moved. It created a self model of itself which it used to plan courses, complete tasks, and get around obstacles. Now that they can create an idea of their own bodies, it might not be long before they create their own personalities and morals. Number 4. Hammerhead Worm You may be familiar with this one thanks to the rounds it made on TikTok. This species of worm started popping up more frequently in the United States this year and nobody really knows how it managed to make its way from Asia. These hammerhead worms, named so for their physical appearance, can grow up to 15 inches long and are honestly pretty disgusting to look at. They are known for their way of killing which is by secreting a sticky and deadly neurotoxin which incapacitates and then liquefies their prey. The main issue is that they're taking over local earthworm populations and damaging the ecosystem and they're pretty damn hard to kill. If you cut one in half, it will simply become two separate worms. This is through a process called fragmentation. In order to kill them, you either need to dry them out with salt or stick them in your freezer for about 48 hours. Though I personally don't think I could ever get close enough to one to do either of those things. Number 3. Pollution Okay, this one isn't a ghost story or some mysterious creature, but it's still pretty damn scary and something that I think we all should be aware of. According to a global report released in May, it revealed that 9 million people died prematurely in 2019 as a result of pollution. This is caused by breathing the dirty air, which slowly leads to heart disease, respiratory problems, and other serious illnesses which ended up being fatal. The Lancet Commission of Pollution and Health said the following, The threat of pollution is much greater than that of war, terrorism, malaria, HIV, tuberculosis, drugs, and alcohol. It is an existential threat to human health and planetary health and jeopardizes the sustainability of modern societies. While awareness towards global warming has been rising in recent years, it seems to sound like we may be beyond the point of no return. The discovery that pollution is having such an impact on our health is certainly a frightening one. Number 2. Pentagon Report Alright, now I'm excited because I finally got to the part of this list where I get to talk about aliens. If you've watched some of my other videos on extraterrestrials, then you may be familiar with the hundreds of pages of reports that were declassified by the Pentagon, these reports all being about UFOs and extraterrestrials. Well, early this year, they released documents that shared some pretty startling information. Some of the documents included information about physical effects 
effects that people have had from coming into contact with UFOs or anomalous vehicles. They included things like radiation burns, brain damage, nervous system damage, and even unexplained pregnancies. There were around 42 medical cases and 300 unpublished cases that were all in relation to physical effects sustained by people who had said they witnessed UFOs and extraterrestrial life. It's pretty shocking that the Pentagon had been trying to cover this up and sweep it under the rug, obviously not wanting people to know the truth about what's out there. Number 1. Russian Spy a young man from Mexico came to the United States where he became a prominent scientist and researcher, having many accolades. What people didn't know was that he was actually leading a double life as a Russian spy. He met a man on a trip to Russia who knew that Hector Cabrera had been looking for property in Miami, and he said that they could help each other out. The Russian was working for the government and with his help, Hector got an apartment under a fake name, being in the same Miami building that a United States informant was living in. He was then tasked with tailing the informant and bringing back any information he found to Russia. During the time he he had two wives and families, one in Russia and one in Mexico, and he balanced them both pretty delicately. However, he was caught doing his spy work on surveillance footage and subsequently arrested, and his activities were found out this year. He was arrested, but it makes you wonder just how many people you see on the street who might secretly be living double lives. Number 10. The Growing Doll Let's kick off this list with one that definitely terrifies me the most. If you think dolls are creepy, then just Wait until I tell you about this one. In 1918, a man in Japan purchased a seemingly normal doll for his sister. Unfortunately, the sister passed away soon after, so the family created a shrine in her memory and placed the doll within it. As time passed, however, they noticed something incredibly unsettling about the doll. It was growing hair. That's right, the hair on the doll was getting longer and longer as more time passed. Because of this, they believed that the doll had become possessed with the restless spirit of the little girl. As a result, they entrusted it to the care of a temple where it still remains to this day, growing more hair. You are able to go to the temple and visit the doll, but photography is strictly prohibited. The priests at the temple say that the doll's hair has now grown down past its knees, and they say that her mouth is opening, slowly growing human teeth. Number 9. Inunaki Tunnel Deep within the mountains of Fukuoka, Japan, you will find the Inunaki Tunnel, home to a dark and troubled history. In 1988, the remains of a young man were found within the tunnel, having been killed by a group of teenage boys. It has also historically been a training ground for Buddhist practitioners, who say that the tunnel is a spiritual hotspot for lost souls. As a result, the tunnel has been sealed off with concrete blocks, but there is an opening at the top, where anyone who's foolish enough can climb up and sneak inside. People who have gone inside have reported the feeling of being watched by a malicious energy. With reports of camera malfunctions, paranormal activity, and unidentifiable noises taking place within the tunnel. Some people say that they can hear the cries of the man who died within, his spirit potentially haunting the now abandoned place. Number 8. Buddha Statue In 2014, an ancient golden Buddha statue was examined and researchers discovered a horrifying secret hidden within. X-rays showed the body of a real monk that had been mummified within the statue, sitting in the exact same position. Researchers believed that the man had taken part in a process known as self-mummification. Centuries ago, this was a common practice for Buddhist monks across Asia. To avoid fat and moisture causing their bodies to decay after they died, they would eat little to nothing in the time leading up to the end of their lives, eating things like pine needles, tree bark, and sesame seeds. This process would last for years as they got older, and they would then ingest a poisonous sap to finally end their lives. Researchers believe that the man inside the statue was a Buddhist monk who died around the year 1100. What was most unsettling though was that the man's body was basically hollow, containing papers covered in messages instead of his organs. 
Number seven, Kappa remains. The Kappa is a cryptid that is native to Japan. For anyone who doesn't know, a cryptid is described as an animal whose existence or survival to the present day is disputed or unsubstantiated. Some famous cryptids include Bigfoot, Mothman, and the Loch Ness Monster. A Kappa is a water creature that is described as being green, having a scaly skin and webbed feet, long elastic arms, and looking humanoid. They are said to lure people to pools of water where they then drown them. If you're looking to avoid being drowned, then it is recommended to carve your name and birth date on a cucumber and feed it to a kappa, because then they'll apparently leave you alone forever. In May of 2014, the remains of an actual kappa were supposedly discovered and then put on display. They were apparently from a kappa that was killed all the way back in the year 1818. It doesn't seem to have been confirmed what the remains are, so could this be actual evidence of cryptids being real? Number 6. Goddess of Death If you're a fan of cursed objects, then let me introduce you to this statue titled the Woman of Lem, also known as the Goddess of Death statue. It is crafted out of limestone around 3500 BC and was discovered in Cyprus in 1878. I know what you're thinking, isn't Cyprus a part of Europe and not Asia? Well, actually, while the country of Cyprus is culturally and politically a part of Europe, it is geographically in Asia and considered transcontinental. So it counts. And if you think it doesn't count, you can take it to the complaints department. Alright, back to why this statue is cursed. Every single family that it has belonged to over the generations has died. The first family to own it had six members, all of whom died within seven years of coming into ownership. The second owner's family died after only four years. The third family to own it also started passing away, but the two remaining members seemed to realize what was happening and donated it to the Royal Scottish Museum. Number 5. King Tut's Trumpets. Let's take a look at some more cursed objects, this time from King Tut's tomb in Egypt. In 1922, a group of archaeologists entered King Tut's tomb and found many interesting objects, including a set of wooden, silver, and bronze trumpets. In 1939, BBC Radio recorded the sound of the trumpets so that people could hear the ancient instruments being played. A few months later, World War II began, and a legend started that the trumpets were capable of summoning wars. Egyptian trumpets have apparently often been used on the battlefield for alerting and directing soldiers, so the legend isn't completely unfounded. And there are Egyptian archaeologists that believe trumpets have mystical powers in relation to war. In 2011, an anonymous staff member had been photographing and documenting the trumpets and decided to play one of them. The Egyptian revolution then taking place later that year. Number 4. Kala Bandar Now let's travel to New Delhi, India for another Another apparent discovery of a real life cryptid, this time one known as a Kala Bandar. In May of 2001, one of these creatures was apparently terrorizing New Delhi. They're described as being around 5 feet tall with thick black hair all over their body and glowing red eyes. It was also described as wearing a metal helmet and having metal claws. All over the city, reports started flooding in of attacks from the so called Monkey Man, and citizens were terrified. A total of three people people actually died as a result, from a woman falling down a staircase to two men who were cornered by the creature and fell from a building. Many reports came in of bites and scratches that had come from the creature and people in the town were scared of even going outside, armed men guarding the neighborhoods at night. Eventually sightings stopped coming in and the town was able to relax. Number 3. The Terracotta Army In China in 1974, a group of farmers made one of the most significant archaeological discoveries ever. They were digging a well when they found what they thought was a statue of Buddha. In fact, it was the famous terracotta army. The army consists of over 8,000 foot soldiers, chariots, and horses which were buried along the first Chinese emperor back in the year 210 BC. They were built to commemorate his massive empire. As it turns out, the terracotta army may be cursed, the farmers believing that any disruption to the army would bring misfortune. And as time 
time went on, this seemed to be true. The farmers and land were taken over by the government, business officials, and third party groups who wanted to take advantage of and profit off the army. The farmland was demolished and replaced with gift shops and attractions. The original farmers have passed away except for two who now work in the same shops that took over their land, signing autographs for a mere $2 a day. Number 2. Lady Di When we think of well preserved specimens, we often think of creatures that were held in ice before being discovered thousands of years later, often still having hair, skin, and even blood in their veins. So now let me tell you about Lady Di, a human woman who was kept perfectly preserved inside an airtight tomb for 2,000 years. Researchers discovered the tomb of the woman in 1971, the wife of an important Han dynasty administrator who passed away in 163 BC and received the burial of a royal. She was placed in a crypt with over 1,000 luxurious items like makeup and 162 statues who would be her servants in the afterlife. Thanks to the seal of the tomb, when she was found 2,000 years later, she was still in incredible condition. She had soft skin and hair and even eyebrows and eyelashes. And they were even able to find her last meal, which was melon, and the cause of her death, which had been a heart attack. Unfortunately, since she was discovered, her body has now started to decay, and only pictures can show what she used to look like. Number 1. The Hope Diamond The Hope Diamond was first discovered in a mine in India, triangular in shape and being described as a beautiful violet color. It was then placed in a statue from which it was apparently later stolen, the thief suffering from an extremely unfortunate death. Since then, it has been said that the Hope Diamond is cursed, anyone who has owned it or even merely touched it having a similar fate. Some owners include Jacques Collet who took his own life, Princess de Lamballe who was killed in the French Revolution, and Jean Le Tavernier who was killed by a pack of wild dogs. The diamond finally came into ownership of Harry Winston who made the wise choice of donating it to the Smithsonian in 1958, where it remains to this day. There are many more tales of owners who are apparently cursed by the diamond, so feel free to look it up if you're interested. Since the diamond made its home in the Smithsonian, the curse has supposedly ended, and there have been no more reported victims of the jewel. Kicking off the list at number 10. Particle Accelerator. We love science experiments, baking soda and vinegar, a DIY volcano, boom, let's make a mess. But what if we flew too close to the sun? What if one experiment could, I don't know, hypothetically swallow our known universe? Sounds fun, let's do it. Sir Martin Rees, Britain's royal astronomer, shines some light on a dark possibility in his book, On the Future. The particle accelerator is this massive machine that does exactly that. It smashes these charged particles together at a high speed, all in the name of science. Now we're trying to further understand condensed matter physics, and while it sure sounds impressive, what if it goes south? What if somebody f***s up? Well, if that happens, it could possibly destroy our known universe. Apparently, these particles smashing together could create this strange matter that shrinks Earth down to 300 feet in diameter, so we'd be tiny or dead. Either way, we'd be like, oh sh Or it creates a black hole that would suck away our entire existence. Thanks, Martin. Now we'll be able to sleep because I'm thinking of particle colliders. Freddy Krueger and also particle colliders. I'm like, Ugh. This holiday season sucks, can't sleep. Number nine, black holes. Christopher Nolan can't even save us from this one. There are three types of black holes. We got stellar, supermassive, and intermediate mass. And they can all kill us easily if they wanted to. Black holes are formed when a star dies. And in turn, we get the strongest Dyson vacuum ever. It sucks in light, so of course we wouldn't make it. There's no chance. There's about 10 million black holes in the Milky Way right now. And the closest one is about 1,500 light years away. So we're looking good for now. We actually got a photo of a black hole not too long ago. It's beautiful. We're learning more and more every year. And one of the scariest facts that I heard was that black holes will be the last thing in the known universe. And these things orbit as well. They don't just sit in the same spot. Like everything else in the galaxy, black holes are also moving around. Which means one will eventually get close. Do you think they would tell us if a black hole was about to swallow us? I sure hope not. I mean, no spoilers, come on. I'm only on season 27 of my life. Keep it real. Number eight, solar flares. Solar flares just sound scary, you know? Our star heats up, we literally revolve around it, and it blesses us with life and tan lines and all the good stuff, but sometimes she acts up. 
Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our planet. This then creates a stream of radiation, it's called solar wind. Now normally this is a beautiful event. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this radiation. But too much of a good thing can be disastrous. This month even, on October 9th, a large solar flare was spotted and three days later, it hit. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is still quite strong. The biggest solar event was actually back in 1859. It's called the Carrington event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking some telegraph operators. Imagine that, if this happens again and it's stronger, we're looking at power outages on a massive scale. You'd be playing VR, then all of a sudden your eyes are like, poof, it just explode. Lovely, immersive. 10 out of 10. Number seven, moving stars. We look at the pyramids of Egypt in awe for many reasons, but as far as placement goes, these three pyramids align with the stars of Orion's belt. But what happens when these stars, like everything else in our known universe, moves? The pyramids won't align with stars forever. They will wander, but which direction will these stars go? That's the, that's the question here. Well, right now, our sun is traveling through the Milky Way. It's carrying us along. We're in this moderately chill space bubble right now, but when we leave this region, say in, I don't know, 50,000 years, we have a great chance of bumping into one of these wandering stars. You think our climate is changing now? Well, you better learn how to be immortal and hang out for 50,000 years. Be a vampire and you'll see what a comet looks like up close. It's very cold and hot at the same time. We're not going to survive. We have like 20 years left, realistically. Number six, artificial intelligence. Okay, this one sounds silly, but we're actually quite close to getting Ultron in real life. God help us. We have robots that do parkour now. Like you can push these things, they would still continue to Silly walk. Have you seen those videos where they get pushed and they're like bleep and they keep going? That's crazy. Now imagine if Siri decided to go rogue one day and then take over the body of one of the Boston Dynamic robots. We're fucked. It's game over. That's it. I've seen iRobot. I don't want any part of this. No thank you. According to CB Insights where they asked 52 experts, 52, so specific, they all agreed that AI will eventually be our downfall and by that time, it's too late. I'm sweating reading that, what? The late Stephen Hawking said AI would be impossible to control. Elon Musk has been reinforcing how crucial it is to regulate AI. We can't regulate technology that we can't predict. That's the main thing here. Even Vladimir Putin says AI will have a profound impact on global politics. And are we really going to disagree with Vladimir Putin? No, no we're not. Next. Number five, asteroid impact. Number five, asteroid impact. Of course, one of our leading theories as to how humans can all of a sudden go extinct is an asteroid. We've seen movies. These suckers have caused large scale extinction events before us. Every time there's a meteor shower, people think it's beautiful, when in reality, it's like sitting near first and third base at a baseball game. It's flying at you nonstop, like we're way too close. Every meteor shower, I'm just like, if one of these days an asteroid got too close, it would pretty much mean the end of humanity, regardless of where it hits on Earth. In fact, an asteroid named Apophis is set to slam into us in 100 years or so. Now, we originally thought that it would hit in 2029, but now we can add 100 years on top of that. It's a big orbit. So we're okay for now. For your grandkids though, heads up Whoville, good luck. Number four, global warming. Okay, this one's, uh, this one's on us, folks. Or at least a little bit. We're for sure to blame in some capacity. Now I'm trying to fight it. Around 90% of scientists say that humans are to blame for global warming, especially people who vape. That's what they said, I read it myself. It's, I'm not making that up. According to climate.gov, we're cooking our planet with heat trapping gases. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere equals heat. Our global average temperature has gone up 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit since the late 90s. Carbon dioxide, methane, ozone, nitrous, and numerous chlorofluorocarbons, which is fun to say, chlorofluorocarbons, nice. More like borofluorocarbons, Billy Madison reference. Stop littering, next. Number three, Yellowstone National Park. Nothing like a big old volcano to shake up your day. The super volcano rumbling under Yellowstone National Park could wipe out millions if it decided to go off one day. It's exploded three times in the past. Two million years ago, pop. 1.3 million years ago, pop. And then 664,000 years ago, boom. The next one, well, it could happen as soon as you click like and subscribe. <laughs> How scary is that? Back in 2014, a team of researchers laid out what an erupting Yellowstone could actually look like in real life, and it's terrifying. It's massive. Entire states would be gone, poof. Hot magma would then rain down as far as San Francisco, and on top of all that chaos, volcanic ash would cover most of our sunlight. It would be a dark and cold world for a little while. They of course had a Yellowstone scene in the movie 2012, and while sure, it's cinematic, I guess, 
it would be a lot louder and way faster. You can't check your rearview mirrors while Yellowstone is blasting off. I'm, I'm sorry folks, this, you just can't do this. Number two, expanding sun. Our sun isn't strong enough to create a black hole after its death, which is a nice thought after hearing about black holes, you know, sucking in light and your hopes and dreams. This is good news, but we do know that our sun will eventually die and it's set to happen in about, drum roll, seven billion years, so plenty of time to get that tan at the water park. We're still looking all right. It'll eventually become a white dwarf though, just floating in the cosmos. Now we won't get to see this of course because we'll be long gone, but if anybody is still hanging out by then, just you know, still kicking it, still healing around, they'll unfortunately witness the sun get larger and cooler. It's predicted that it'll suck in Venus and Mercury, but as for Earth, well, solar winds generated would hypothetically be strong enough to slow Earth down. So we wouldn't get sucked into the sun, we would instead face a slow, hot death. And you thought it was hot outside now. Well, hang out for a bit. <laughs> well, it's pretty bad, but it'll get worse. And finally, number one, nuclear weapons. In 1938, history changed forever when German nuclear physicist Otto Hahn Fritz Strassmann and Lise Meitner discovered nuclear fission in a lab in Berlin. They discovered that an atom splitting into lighter atoms caused a powerful blast. This was groundbreaking. Humans discovered a new way to power technology, but at the same time, they opened the door for nuclear horrors atomic bombs. On July 16th, 1945, the Trinity test was conducted. The first atomic bomb was detonated in a New Mexico desert. It was deemed a success with mushroom clouds reaching up to 40,000 feet high. This test changed history forever. Roughly 110,000 lives were later lost at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and many believe that nuclear warfare will truly be the end of humanity. The pure impact alone is one thing, but nuclear winters, where clouds of dust and black smoke just block out the sun for days at a time, could obviously have lasting effects. For example, for example, if there was an all-out nuclear war between Russia and the United States, officials predict that temperatures would drop 8 degrees for 5 or 6 years, so we wouldn't even be able to grow food at that time. It would be absolute chaos. Stop bombing each other. Number 10, the missing link. According to a study posted by Cardiff University, scientists think they have finally found the missing link that foreshadows the ice age, and it's a little too real. What did they know before? Well, scientists knew that ice age cycles developed due to periodic changes in the Earth's orbit. The small variations in solar energy set off massive shifts in Earth's climate, but how remained a mystery. Well, now scientists think it has everything to do with the melting of the icebergs. Ha ha ha, well, isn't that interesting? When the Earth is in the right position, and icebergs begin to melt away from Antarctica, immense volumes of fresh water move into the Atlantic Ocean away from the Southern Ocean. Therefore, the Southern Ocean gets saltier and massive changes in circulation patterns pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. We know that the less CO2 in the atmosphere, the colder the temperature will be as it reduces the greenhouse effect. Therefore, Earth moves towards ice age conditions. Now, I think we can be a little more scared of the ice caps melting. Number nine, lion cubs. Lion cubs in ice? Well, yes, yes indeed. The world is strange and wonderful and it was once covered in a lot of ice. Unyan and Dina were the first cave lions to be found and another was found more recently in Yakutia, Russia. Both sets of remains date back to the ice age around 12,000 years ago. The species uncovered went extinct 10,000 years ago and these poor babies died in a really, really sad way. Either their mother died or abandoned them, and the newest cub is so well preserved that you can see how it went to sleep with its little head resting on their paw. They also found two other cave lions, Boris and Sparta, in the same area, both perfectly preserved and 18,000 years apart. These two little cubs also helped establish the appearance of cave lions without manes. But the most exciting thing about the remains is that it could be used for cloning now that we've completed the genome. Interesting. Number eight. A wolf head. The wolves we have now are pretty massive, but imagine how big their ancestors must have been. Pavel Efimov was searching for mammoth tusks in Siberia, Russia, when he made an unexpected discovery the head of an Ice Age wolf, perfectly preserved. Its hair, teeth, brain, and ears are fully intact after over, huh, can't believe this, after 40,000 years frozen in the permafrost. These massive creatures were a little over twice the size of modern day wolves and could crush bone with their jaws. Definitely not the most friendly of creatures. It would have been a full grown wolf when it died, but it wasn't killed by humans. Why was the head separated from the body then? Well, scientists believe that it died originally intact, but with the melting and shifting and cracking of the ice, probably separated them. The most exciting part is that now scientists will be able to study the evolution of the modern day wolf. Number seven, disease. I think we've talked about this on the channel before, but here we are again. In August 2016, 21 people were mysteriously infected by anthrax. This is 
just one terrifying discovery that scientists have made beneath the ice. Researchers are concerned that some of the world's most deadly viruses are trapped beneath the permafrost from the ice age. And based on this event, they don't seem to be wrong. Not only are they worried about the potential resurfacing of the bubonic plague or smallpox, but something even bigger. Something we may not even have heard of yet. Due to the rapid rate of the ice melting, it is only a matter of time before we figure this out the hard way. We've survived one pandemic. Is another waiting beneath the ice one layer away from revival? I really hope not. Number six, giant animals. Considering we have started this list off talking about a lot of animals, it seems to make sense that we highlight a theme here. Ever wonder what it would be like to live in the ice age? <laughs> Me neither, except for maybe right now, because it's boiling right now. Oh, it's so hot. Never mind. Way too hot. We're just gonna take this off. Ironically, it's way too hot in the studio today, so here we are. Why? Because everything was so much bigger and even imagining that terrifies me. Megafauna were large, oversized animals that lived around the time of the Ice Age. In fact, it was their playground. Not only was there, of course, the woolly mammoth, but massive saber-toothed tigers, short-faced bears, and of course, the above, massive dire wolves. Plus, you can almost guarantee they were always hungry with food being so scarce. I wonder if people will look back in like a thousand years from now and think about how small our animals are. But believe me, from giant and wombats that could be mistaken for bison to killer birds, not a place we would want to live. But they also had some unique survival skills. For instance, the Ice Age rhino was believed to have had a shovel horn to help remove snow. That's kind of neat. Number five, human revival. Now, considering all the technology we have today, unless we have a day after the tomorrow kind of situation, if we have another ice age, we might be okay. Might. But I am pretty optimistic because Homo sapiens were able to survive the ice age, so why not we? Despite not being hairy or thick skinned, they were resourceful and inventive, relying on traps to catch their dinner. The hunting tools they had would have been limited to stones, knives, and arrowheads. Anything more complicated would have been really, really, really rare. So instead, they used traps, and this is where it would get kind of gruesome. Once their prey would fall prey to whatever traps were sent, the men would surround the injured creature and maul it to death. Hey, when you're hungry, you're hungry. And in a dog eat dog world, it's a privilege to care about how you will kill your next meal. Number four, mammoth house. What do you do when you don't have bricks and mortar? Well, you build a house out of, um, bones that you just find lying around. Yeah. According to an article posted in 2020, Russian archaeologists found a massive circle made of the bones of Ice Age creatures. The bones are from creatures that lived over 20,000 years ago. Not only are there five dozen mammoths, but reindeer, horses, bears, wolves, red and arctic foxes. And this isn't the only circle like it. There are around 70 Ice Age bone circles in 25 sites in Ukraine and Russia. Some of the bones were still joined together, which meant that they still had meat on their bones when they were added. In the middle, there are wooden poles that were presumably used to support roofs made of animal hides. There is still speculation as to whether they were used for homes, ritual, or storage buildings, but still, a house of bones sounds odd to us, I know, but imagine having to withstand cold without the tech we have now. Ah, desperate times call for desperate measures. Number three, mini ice ages. Did you know that we may get a mini ice age before we get a really big one? Like a test run, kind of, if you will. Though they aren't as deadly, they can still cause widespread famine and disease due to failed crops. The last recorded mini ice age happened between the 12th and 14th century, peaking from 1500 to 1850. It mostly took place in the Northern hemisphere of Europe where seas would freeze repeatedly and glaciers would crush whole villages. This happened quite often in places like Switzerland. But even worse, just like in Game of Thrones, they would go whole years, whole years without summer. No, thank you. No one quite knows what caused this tiny ice age, but scientists have a couple of ideas. One, that it had something to do with volcanic activity and that it had an effect on the solar energy the earth was receiving. Whatever the reason, it definitely provides yet another explanation as to why the middle ages were just so sad. So sad. Number two, more CO2 is a good thing? Hmm. Considering the first point on this list, we know that less CO2 in the atmosphere will lead to colder temperatures, which could mean ice ice baby. But considering the very, very real concept of global warming and the fact that we are injecting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, could that mean we will stave off 
an ice age. Well, scientists think this might be so. While we definitely need to figure out how to control our output so other problems don't arise, it could help fight off the next ice age, right? Weird. There's an upside to everything. According to Cambridge University, although the planetary cycle makes an ice age inevitable, like the seasons, the only way it can happen is if the CO2 level is too low. At this point, we have pumped so much CO2 into the air that even if it all stopped tomorrow, we would still have enough to keep an ice age at bay for at least a thousand years. However, if we keep going the way we are going, well, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I'm like, what do you want? Snowball, hot earth. Depends what you like, I guess. How the heck are we gonna get out of this one, you know? And last but not least, the snowball. What's more terrifying than an ice age? A giant snowball. No, not the one that you made to throw at your neighbor. I mean the one that could be our earth. A snowball earth is a very, very terrifying possibility, though probably not as likely. A snowball earth would destroy much of life on earth and sink our entire world into a deep freeze. And it did. The snowball earth was a series of ice ages that occurred during the Neoproterozoic era that were so massive the entire planet froze over 500 million years ago. Why did it happen? Well, scientists from MIT speculate that it was due to a drop in heat so steep that it triggered a runaway effect. The ice expanded so quickly the earth didn't have time to recover. This drop in temperature might have been prompted by several volcanic eruptions that happened in quick succession. Scientists are unsure as to whether humans could make this happen, but if it did, we wouldn't be able to stop it. At the speed at which the Earth's atmosphere is changing because of us, who knows what could happen. It could go so far, it goes the other way around. You just don't know. Starting us off at number 10 is the old classic from pop culture, aliens. While the first one isn't much of a real discovery, it is becoming much more prominent these days. If you have tuned into any of our channels or sister channels and recently watched any of those videos, I'm sure you have heard us talk about aliens at nauseum. But that's because of all the new strange UFO sightings that are now being declassified, as well as being treated with respect and dignity for the first time ever. However, there are countless ufologists that will say they believe aliens are trying to contact us to help us rather than end us. That being said, there are also countless other scientists who are out there who theorize that if we were to make contact with an intelligent extraterrestrial species, we might be in deep trouble. They could be here to take advantage of Earth's natural resources and could swat us away like a fly in a diner, or attempt to colonize our planet with or without our permission, or lastly, we could even destroy ourselves with the the answer to, are we alone in the universe? The late physicist named Gerard O'Neill in a 1979 interview stated, Advanced Western civilization has had a destructive effect on all primitive civilizations it has come into contact with, even in those cases where every attempt was made to protect and guard the primitive civilization. I don't see any reason why the same thing would not happen to us. Ugh, I don't know man, I'm hoping that if the answer to, are we alone in this universe is answered within my lifetime, I'm really hoping it doesn't go down like that. And number nine, we have one that might seem obvious, but nuclear war. Okay, hold the phone here. There is a little bit of good news here. Limited exchanges like the terrible US bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are fairly rare. Although, bombings unfortunately do happen around the world every single day in war town countries, which is very sad, but none that are nuclear in size. If nuclear war were to occur, it would most likely be a humanitarian catastrophe and harm many, but not all human beings. That being said, that doesn't mean that's where the damage would stop. The possibility of nuclear winter is very very possible in the aftermath of a nuclear war, and that is something to have cause for alarm. Nuclear winter could happen if enough nukes were detonated, and then the world's temperatures would decrease dramatically. After that, it would lead to disrupting food production and possibly rendering human life impossible. It's unclear how possible or how large of a nuclear war you would need to create a worldwide nuclear winter, but nevertheless, it is a possibility. But don't worry, here's a solution. I got it right here for you. <laughs> Stop destroying each other. Wow, would you look at that? I'm a freaking genius. At number eight, we have the reversal of the Earth's magnetic field. Every few hundred thousand years or so, the Earth's magnetic field dwindles to practically nothing for almost half a century, and then reappears with the North and South Poles flipped. The last time this happened was about 780,000 years ago though, which means we might just be overdue for a complete reversal of our poles. You hear that, Santa? It's uh, time to relocate, buddy. What is currently alarming is that over the last century, the strength of Earth's magnetic fields have 
have decreased by 5%. But why is this a worry in a world filled with GPS systems and people who will take you anywhere you want anyway? Well, the magnetic fields deflect particle storms and cosmic rays from the sun. Without Earth's magnetic protection, these particles could strike Earth's atmosphere and eat at an already disappearing ozone layer. So if the 5% decrease is of any concern, maybe we better keep an eye on our compasses and start joining Earth's millionaires up in space. At number 7 we have the vacuum collapse. In Kurt Vonnegut's classic book Cat's Cradle, Vonnegut popularized the idea of Ice 9, a fictional form of water that is much more stable and is a solid at room temperature. If someone unleashed a bit of it, then all of Earth's water transformed to Ice 9 and would freeze all over Earth. In the early history of the universe based off a leading cosmological model, space was filled with energy. This state of energy was called a false vacuum and was highly precarious. A new, more stable vacuum appeared and just like Ice 9, it completely took over. This caused an incredible blast of energy which caused a runaway expansion of the cosmos. Even though it is unlikely, it is possible that an even more stable vacuum exists. As this universe expands and cools, tiny bubbles of this new vacuum could appear and spread at the speed of light. The laws of physics would change in their wake and a huge blast of energy would crash everything as we know it into tiny little space crumbs. Like I said, it is not very likely, but it is a strange discovery nonetheless. Scientists are much more worried for our number 6 spot. At number 6 we have rogue black holes. Not sure how many of you know about this, but our galaxy is filled with black holes. You know, just collapsed stellar corpses about 10 to 24 times as massive as the sun. You know those things? How many of those are there though? Well, that's a good question. It is estimated that in our very own Milky Way galaxy that there are about 10 million of these things. These cosmic wonders are cause for alarm because their gravity is so strong that they can swallow just about anything in its path. The black hole wouldn't have to come that close to Earth either to cause a massive swallowing of everything we know. Or even just passing through our solar system, these black holes could distort all of our planets its orbits and Earth could get caught in an elliptical path that would send our climate out of whack or even us spiraling into space out of our natural orbit. That sounds pretty scary to me. Also just the realization that if Earth moved out of its habitable zone, we could all be done for it for good. I, I can't think about that anymore, that's, <laughs> that's gonna give me lots of nightmares. Coming in hot at our halfway point at number 5, just like the dinosaurs, we have asteroids and I ain't talking about the video game. I'm talking about the massive space rocks hurtling through space and possibly crashing into our planet. It happened 66 million years ago and honestly it could happen again. Asteroids and space rocks have close calls with our planet all the time and even small meteors and things like that hit earth all of the time as well. Most of the time though, they burn up the atmosphere upon entry as well as they fall into our oceans. However, large ones can still be out there and luckily for us NASA is fairly confident in its ability to track these large space rocks. Scientists have recently back in 2018 strengthened their fight against this unlikely but catastrophic event. They have better detection services now as well as have plans to rocket a space vehicle into space at the asteroid to change its course. <laughs> How sweet is that? However, that has not been tested yet as well as if one were to get to a big enough size it wouldn't really matter anyway. So for the time being, let's just keep our fingers, toes, and whatever the hell else that we can cross so that this does not happen. At number 4 we have super volcanoes. Fun fact, there are some out there who actually believe that it was a super volcano explosion that killed the dinosaurs and not the large asteroid I previously talked about. But that being said, most evidence still does point to a massive asteroid and I'm going to go with the majority of scientists on this one because that's the smart thing to do. Anyway, the Permian Triassic extinction event that rendered almost 90% of the Earth's species extinct is actually believed to have been caused by a mega eruption. Eruptions can cause significant global cooling as well as disruption to agricultural production around the world. However, one of super proportions is incredibly unlikely. That being said, there would be no way to stop it. So that's that's fun. You know, as of right now, like I said though, it is unlikely that this will happen during the existence of humans. But like with most things, it's not the immediate impact of the event, it's the lasting effects on the environment that could render the end to all of us. Starting us off in our top 3, at number 3 we have AI. That's right, just like all those crazy movies have taught us growing up, many do fear our biggest downfall coming from our own electronic cyborg hands. The fear is that once these AIs become intelligent enough to teach themselves computer science, they could use that knowledge to improve themselves creating a spiral of increasing intelligence and finally taking over everything and everyone as we know it. Even the late great Stephen Hawking warned the world against AI back in 2014. Hawking stated, it would 
would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever increasing rate. Yup, if Stephen Hawking said it, then you know there's something to it. So once again, you can find me in my end of the world bunker. Coming in mega hot at number two, we have climate change. That's right, this one we all known about for years and we'll have to deal with for years as well. Corals are bleaching, seas are warming, temperatures are warming, hurricanes are happening more frequently, ice is melting, forest fires are raging, the list goes on and on and on. On. Yes, we are in a major battle to save our planet from the lasting and terrible effects of climate change. And if we do not do something about it soon, in our lifetime, it will only make things worse for the next generation who may or may not see the truly horrid effects of climate change. So please, everyone, just remember you don't need to be perfect. We all just need to do better. Fight against companies who don't take our climate crisis seriously. Educate, converse, do whatever you can. And sure enough, we will have a ripple effect of saving our planet. And just remember, it all starts with just one tiny action. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is the unknown. That's right, the scariest and strangest discoveries that could end all of humanity as we know it are the ones that haven't even been thought of or discovered yet. I don't even want to think of what else could be out there after going through this list today, but if one thing is for certain, it's that most of these we have control over and we should most definitely take control over. Like I said earlier, see what happens when we all start looking out for each other in the smallest and most unexpected places. It creates a ripple effect and leaves us just a little bit better off. Unless it's an asteroid or a super volcano. Then we're all f Number 10, decoy spider. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small, but they're exceptionally smart. Smart spiders, that's terrifying already. These spiders only measure to be about five millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web that they've created. Now, this might sound alarming at first, but this larger spider is actually fake. Yeah, it's actually a decoy spider that the small spider built out of various materials, such as food, scraps, debris, and even their old skin. These spiders were only discovered pretty recently in the Amazon, so not too much is known about them as there still needs to be tons of research done. All we know is that they like to make things that look like a large spider, and that's terrifying enough. Maybe it's for defense purposes, or maybe it's like the ancient Romans, you know? Maybe they're just statues honoring a spider god. That's terrifying. I take that back. Number nine, red belly piranha. I don't have to explain to you why a piranha is a bad idea to get near. I mean, we've all seen Piranha 3 Double D, right? That's a timeless classic. Well, the red bellied piranha is one of the most dangerous piranhas in the piranha game. Its behavior is way more aggressive than that of an average piranha. It's almost like an acre of the rainforest disappearing every second is making it more aggressive. Yeah, I'd be aggressive too in those waters, no doubt about it. Number eight, the electric eel. I say, ooh, girl, don't touch this. First of all, never rub an electric eel like that. Never rub one like they're a genie lamp. You'll want more than three wishes at that point. That's horrible. That was the Moray eel. That one, bite your fingers off easily, but you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti, appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery. It can release a shock up to 800 60 volts, more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. Number seven, the green anaconda. Of course we have to mention the anaconda. It's so scary, the biggest snake ever. That's horrible. This movie came out 25 years ago. I remember watching it with my family. It made me extremely afraid of snakes and water. Although the green anaconda is a non-venomous snake, the boa constrictor is still one of the most feared. Obviously, look at its size. Green anacondas live in calm marshes or slow streams. They wait until their large prey gets thirsty, and once they come to the water, the anaconda suffocates its lunch. It wraps itself around it like 17 times. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. And then it just slowly, ugh, just slowly eats it. It's so scary. It's so dinosaur, really. Anacondas hunt prey that's larger than us humans, so if they wanted to, they could for sure just swallow us whole. There's only no evidence of it happening because humans rarely interact with them. So yeah, let's keep that ratio at the zero point. That would be great. Don't be the first guy to get eaten by an anaconda, please. Number six, the boiling river. Ooh, this one's hot. It's real hot. It's pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing. 
but for all the wrong reasons, yeah, it's not good. As its name suggests, water temperatures in the boiling river reach up to 93 degrees Celsius. The steam coming off the surface of the water sure is inviting, but animals and humans know better by now. Yeah, no skinny dipping in this river, or any river for that matter. I don't know, there's still water snakes. There's still debate around the source of the heat for this river, but as of right now, it's believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Now, despite the river not being near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, it is quite an anomaly. It's odd, just a hot inviting river for no reason. There are local legends, of course, that say the river is a place of power and that the mother of the waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange mystifying river. Yeah, I like the sounds of that way more than geothermal activity. That's cool. Oh, the mother of the waters? Yeah, she heated this one up, come on in. Geothermal, I'm like, eh, it's hot, you might burn your toes. Number five, Black Cayman. If you aren't a fan of alligators, just go ahead and skip to number four, I guess, because this one's terrifying, honestly. These super alligators live in calm, slow-moving rivers, of course, like the big bad anacondas, places you wouldn't expect a dinosaur to jump out at you. Essentially, that's where you're gonna find one. Just like dangerous river snakes, these Black Cayman will take it slow. They'll wait for their prey to have a little sip of water, and then, and only then, the largest predator in the Amazon will then race out and grab its lunch, and then quickly return to the water. It's so scary. I've seen this on Reddit, it is, they're fast. They are quite fast. Birds, reptiles, mammals, you name it, this thing can eat it all and it will eat it all with this big <sighs> chomping mouth. Between 2008 and October 2013 alone, there were 43 black caiman attacks on people. Yeah, human beings. So stay away from the Amazon, stay away from the water. Don't do anything. Don't even go to zoos anymore. Just stop, don't even exist. Number four, Silkhenge. We don't even know what spider this is. So yeah, mystery spider leaving mystery art. Here we go. He's the Banksy of spiders. Let's talk about him. There's some sort of spider that's making what is referred to as a Silkhenge. Now it's tiny, it's on a little leaf. You will miss this. That's why it's so rare to find. This piece of spider art was first discovered in 2013 by Troy Alexander. Side note, what an amazing name, like Troy Alexander, you're a Greek goddess, my friend. Troy Alexander posted a photo of it on the internet asking for help in identifying it. I mean, because obviously it's so alien, but nobody can help identify because it's a totally unknown phenomena. And these structures help with reproduction because they're actually protecting eggs. That's the whole purpose. There's one main spire that is constructed of spider silk, and then that's where all the eggs are contained. Then there's also a wall or a fence that's made of spider silk to protect all the eggs in the middle. Therefore, it looks like Stonehenge. That's where it gets its name from, obviously. Stonehenge. Silkhenge, they look the same, both fascinating. One's really gross and made of webs, the other's made of rocks and lovely. Hopefully one day we can find out the real creator of these sculptures so we can give them the proper credit they deserve. But number three, mosquitoes. These guys suck no matter where you are, but when it comes to the Amazon, oh, it's much worse than you could ever imagine, of course, as if anything else is not calming in there. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous because they can fly. You don't see them coming, and once they get you, too late, the damage has already been done. They have your blood, and now they're gonna go sell it on the black web. If you travel to parts of the Amazon rainforest and you don't have yellow fever vaccinations or extremely strong mosquito repellent, then you are going to have an extremely bad time. Yeah, these guys are just clouds of malaria waiting for you to walk right into. And that's so disgusting, I can't even do it. Even cottages, I can't do it. I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. Number two, bullet ants. Ugh, Ant-Man would not fight this ant, no way. They're called bullet ants because their bite feels like a bullet wound. So that is a promising start, my friends. It's also referred to as a Parapanera clavata. The bullet ant is commonly found in tropical rainforests in Central and South America. Their sting is considered the most powerful in the world, hence the, you know, bullet alias. And its effects can last 24 hours. That's a long time to be in a horrible amount of pain. These guys get you in a colony though? Game over, there's a good chance that you won't survive that. One was bad enough, let alone a colony? Oh, that's terrible. It's venom is so powerful that currently these ants are being studied for its use as a pesticide. So we're sacrificing ants in order to further their research on how to sacrifice ants. Number one, Brazilian wandering spider. Alrighty, this spider can actually help you guys out. Let's do it. Its bite can give you an erection that lasts for hours. That's a real fact. This animal is also obviously dangerous. Its bite will also hurt besides, you know, that amazing side effect. You'll be sweating, blood pressure will increase, hence, you know, that side effect. And they're more commonly known as banana spiders. It can be found, of course, in Brazil, and there's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. So my advice, avoid them all. The science is quite interesting here though. They're trying to create the next Viagra by using the spider's venom. Those are the top 10 terrifying Amazon forest discoveries that will make you never travel to the Amazon again. In our number 10 spot, we have the roar. 
This is a story about a girl named Alice who had been a fire watcher for a few years and never had any problems. She would go to work for eight hours and then leave. She would of course see rustling in the trees and, and assume it was an animal of some sort, but that's it, no issues. Until one unfortunate night when she was just settling into her shift, when she realized that she had forgotten her iPod in the car. She knew that it was highly discouraged to leave the tower, especially after sundown, but man, music is her everything and she felt that the potential mental torture from not having it would be worth the risk. So as quick as she could, she left her base, ran to her car and grabbed her iPod. She said that it couldn't have been more than 10 minutes in total. When she returned, she noticed that the door was open. Ah, crap. She immediately looked for cover to hide. About a minute after finding cover, she heard a deafening roar that she swears sounded otherworldly. And then she heard something that sounded like big footsteps leaving. After some time had passed and she felt sure that the creature had left, she slowly made her way to the tower. But when she opened the door, much to her surprise, it appeared untouched, almost as if no one even went inside. To this day, she's still confused about that night. Maybe she was just tired and hallucinated the whole thing, but she swears she was not on any illicit substance and that roar was monster-like. In our number nine spot, we have The Men in Black. This is a story by a man named Gabe who had been working a shift at the watchtower when he noticed two black SUVs drive into the trail in the distance and eventually disappeared among the trees. Seeing this of course put him on high alert as it was pretty early in the morning and the sun was just rising. He found himself really paying attention to see if he could spot any further movement by them. Some time passed when suddenly he hears a loud gunfire. He immediately feels a wave of anxiety as it dawns on him that either an animal was shot or a human. But something told him that two black SUVs rolling up in the woods so early in the morning meant that it was probably more likely a human assassination than an animal. He sat there, letting his imagination run wild, when two large men knocked on the door of the tower. They were definitely special agents or security guards. He let them in, thinking that if they were violent, they would just come in anyway. They started questioning him, clearly trying to find out if he saw anything. He quickly replied, no, and did everything in his power to convince them. Seemingly satisfied that he was telling the truth, they just left. That was probably the most intense moment in his five years on the job. He never experienced anything quite like that again. Damn, that sounded like he witnessed a top secret assassination. Holy bejesus. In our number eight spot, we have the flying man. In North Carolina, circa 2003, an old man by the name of John was on duty at his watchtower. It was about 4 a.m. and as usual, as he put it, he was in his chair guarding the land. He liked to think of himself as some kind of important guard of a magical land such as Middle Earth. Yes, he grew up obsessed with the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He had a small TV in the tower with him and he would often watch reruns of old shows like Bewitched. I Dream of Genie and Gilligan's Island, to name a few. So that's what he was doing on this particular night. He was feeling rather sleepy and was on the brink of dozing off when suddenly he saw something jump into the sky in the corner of his eye. Startled, he got out of his chair and tried to see what it was. Normally he would have grabbed his binoculars, but it was still too dark and the sun wasn't going to rise for another two hours. Just then, he saw it again. Whatever it was jumped high into the sky and then back down into the trees. What was that, he thought. It looked too big to be a bird, but he couldn't quite make out what it was. He waited for a second and then he saw it again. But this time he saw what it was as it jumped directly under the moonlight. He knows how crazy it sounds, but without a doubt, he said he saw a human face and what looked like a human jumping. He immediately felt terrified, ducked down and hid in the tower cot and stayed there for a good hour. Nothing happened afterwards. The sun came up and eventually he left the tower to go home, but he has never forgotten that night and he has never seen anything like that ever again. In our number seven spot, we have The Liar. 
This is the story of a female fire watcher who was on her way to start her shift when she noticed a man with long straight black hair wearing a long leather black cloak and spiky boots. She wouldn't have thought that this was that out of the ordinary as she's come across a few punk rockers in her time, but on this particular day, it was literally 104 degrees Fahrenheit and it was almost impossible to breathe. So the fact that there was a person alive wearing a long leather coat on this day was insanity. She noticed him out of the corner of her eye standing beside his car, just staring at her as she left her car. She smiled trying to be polite and then started picking up her pace and walked towards her tower. He began to follow her and he must have ran to catch up with her because as quick as a blink, he was right behind her saying, hello. She jumped from the surprise and said, hi, back. He asked her where she was going. She told him that she was going to work and that she was kind of in a rush. He said, no problem. Why don't you just give me your number and we can talk later? At this point, she was scared about saying no as he clearly had already shown signs of insanity, but she also didn't want to give this potential psycho her actual number. So she just said, I'm sorry, but I have a boyfriend. He didn't respond right away. And so she picked up her pace and she waved to him, thinking that the conversation had died and that he would just walk away. But then he screamed, liar. She jumped and turned around to see him just glaring at her. She decided to make a run for it. When she got to the tower, she quickly locked the door and thankfully he never followed her. She decided to take some self-defense classes after this incident, just in case anything like this ever happened again. Probably a good idea. In our number six spot, we have the witches. According to this fire watcher, witch rituals aren't particularly uncommon to see in the forest. At least around their Sabbaths, you will see covens of witches gathering around and chanting around a fire in the middle of the forest, sometimes naked. Yes, she could see them with her binoculars. She assures you that she wasn't being a creep, but she just wanted to make sure that they were safe and watching for fires is literally her job. Regardless of how truly risky it is to start a bonfire in the forest, in this area in particular where this fire watcher works, she would be highly against any after hour meetup as she has seen many a deadly animal in the woods in her time. But it doesn't matter how many signs you put up, people never listen. She always has to report the covens for the mini bonfires and it always makes her feel frustrated because she wants people to be able to practice their religions, but why do they have to risk an entire forest fire? In any case, she gets shook every time she sees them and their naked ways. <laughs> Fascinating. I'm the type of person to wear fleece in bed in the summer, so the idea of dancing around naked outside at any point sounds torturous to me. In our number five spot, we have The Flash. This particular fire watcher hasn't had a lot of weird experiences in the year that he has been on duty, but there have been a few questionable occurrences. The watcher said that every so often you'll be looking out and you'll see a light flash randomly in the forest. Not like a firefly type of glittery flash, but a bright flash. He's asked his coworkers and they've also noticed this strange occurrence every so often. He has also seen a lot of extremely fast objects in the sky. You could argue that they are planes, but they're seemingly way faster than planes. Perhaps it could be a plane that the government has invented that is extremely fast and we just don't know about it yet. Or it could be aliens, one of the two. But he'll never forget the first time he saw the abnormally fast plane or alien ship, as he had never seen anything like that before. And for a second, he did feel a bit scared that perhaps some kind of foreign entity was about to land on Earth. But it was late at night and he was pretty tired. In our number four spot, we have the dog man. This is the story of a man that was on duty at a watchtower in Michigan. It was the year 2007. It was just a regular day. Nothing out of the ordinary happened from what he can remember. He had a 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift, and so he was getting ready for another long night. The night had gotten pretty dark fairly quickly, and so he was looking out into basically an almost pitch black wonderland with a million stars in the sky and the moon being the main source of light over the forest. Some time had passed when all of a sudden, he heard the weirdest howl that he had ever heard before. It was either a wolf that was sick or an animal that he had never come across before because it was a weird screeching howl. He looked around to see if he could spot its owner when he saw some movement down below. He continued watching the spot when suddenly 
he saw the craziest thing. It was a dog, but with the body of a human. It took everything in him not to scream and run for his life, but he thought he was most likely safer in the fire tower, and he was right. That weird creature never revealed himself ever again, but whoa, was that scary. In our number three spot, we have the stair. One night, this fire watcher was working an overnight shift. She was very aware of campers being in the woods that night because it was summer and people tended to camp in her forest quite a lot. So it wasn't alarming for her to see a man walking through the area below her tower as she assumed that it was just one of her campers. But when she got a closer look at the man, she noticed that he was holding a knife in his hand in a very horror movie-like way. And the next thing she knew, the man was looking up at her and they were having a full-on staring contest for what she said felt like an eternity. The man, still holding the knife, smiles at her then continues on his way. She immediately checked the locks on the tower to make sure that they were locked, but she never saw him after that probably one of the creepiest, most alarming 20 seconds of her life. In our number two spot, we have the spaceship. This particular fire watcher by the name of Kyle began telling his story by prefacing that being a fire watcher and a forest service worker, you see a lot more strange things that you can't rationalize or explain than you do fires. He would not recommend this job to anyone that fears the unknown. One memory that he will never forget is of a light in the sky that was just lingering. He became particularly interested in it because it didn't look quite like a star. It was this skinny vertical object that was bright and just hanging out in the sky. At some point, it looked like something on it flashed, kind of like the lights on a plane, except this was on the bottom of its vertical tail and it wasn't red. He continued to look at it when suddenly, at an incredible lightning speed, it disappeared into the sky. Oh, so basically this guy saw a spaceship, wild. But honestly, if you're sitting around and just staring at the wilderness and the sky for eight hours, you're bound to witness a spaceship at some point, I think. Coming up in our number one spot, we have the Mud Man. This story is told by a fire watcher named Alex who never thought that he would want to be a fire watcher, but he saw an opening for a position that paid 10 grand a month, and so he obviously wasn't going to turn it down. 10 grand a month, holy moly. I wonder if this position is straight out of our tax dollars because seriously, 10 grand is a ridiculous amount for this person, and if I'm paying for this, well, I'ma be writing a stern letter. <laughs> Let's be real, I def wouldn't, but whatever, ridiculous. Anyways, so this guy, Alex, began his first shift at the watchtower, and as he enters the tower, he finds a letter from his coworker on things he should know about the job. The coworker listed a bunch of things that he should be aware of, such as don't go out in the middle of the night, if you hear anything in the middle of the night, stop what you're doing and hide, and oh yeah, here's a gun just in case. Okay, starting to see why this job may pay so high. In any case, Alex starts his first shift, everything is going well until around 3 a.m. in the morning when he begins to hear the sound of metal creaking. He felt a sharp pain in his stomach and out of fear, he ran to the cot in the corner to hide. Just then, the door opened and he saw something that didn't look human, like a humanoid. With every step, a squish sound came with it. It walked to his cot and then eventually turned around and left. Later on, while talking to his coworker, he was informed that he had his first encounter with what they have called the Mud Man. Apparently one of the many monsters in this forest. Okay, yep, well, that's terrifying. I kind of wish they had installed a camera because we the people need to see evidence of this, like now. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have this scary water discovery. Researchers at Michigan State University have been working to try and provide us with a worldwide view on how climate change will affect our water availability. We obviously need water to survive, and we are quickly running out of it, and climate change certainly isn't helping. In an article posted to the National Science Foundation on February 2nd, these researchers announced their discovery that if we continue on the same trajectory we are on, by the end of the 21st century, the global land area and population facing extreme drought could more than double. This is an extremely dire discovery, and researchers have said that if things don't change, areas of the southern hemisphere where water scarcity is already a problem will be disproportionately affected, and that it could affect food security 
security and escalate human migration and conflict. This study definitely shed a light on a problem that we don't always think about. In our number nine spot today, we have this AirPod mishap. Bradford Gautier woke up in the morning feeling fine, except for one bizarre thing. When he tried to drink a glass of water, he found that he was unable to actually swallow the water down. He realized he felt a bit of pressure in his chest and thought, oh, maybe my throat is just dry since he had been shoveling snow the night before. Bradford had fallen asleep with his AirPods in, so he went to look for them lost in the bed so that he could get them back into their case to charge. After searching for quite a while, he realized he could only find one, and that's when other members of his household began suggesting what might have happened to the other one. After an emergency room visit and an x-ray, doctors discovered exactly what Bradford's family assumed had happened. In his sleep, Bradford had accidentally swallowed one of the AirPods and it was lodged in the lower part of his esophagus. Luckily, he was able to quickly get it removed and apparently it actually still works despite the volume being a bit lower. In our number eight spot today, we have this horrible Vancouver Island discovery. One Vancouver Island resident made a pretty terrible discovery recently as she was walking along a beach in Nanaimo. As she was walking, she unfortunately came across a sea lion that didn't have its head. Of course, this is never a good discovery, but matters were made worse when she ended up finding five sea lions in total with the same devastating injury. A marine mammal expert for the area explained that the injuries are definitely deliberate, which means that there is someone or some people who are going around doing this to the sea lions, which is absolutely horrible. The expert also explained that some of these sea lions were stellar sea lions, which are an at-risk species, which certainly makes the crime even worse than it already was. There will be an investigation into these discoveries and hopefully they'll be able to figure out what exactly is going on there. In our number seven spot today, we have this creepy garbage bag discovery. A New Zealand resident was walking along one day when they came across two full garbage bags. This can be a sign of something pretty gruesome, so they decided to call the police. Once the bags were open, it was confirmed that luckily they weren't filled with human remains, as was the worst case scenario, but they did contain something pretty unsettling. These garbage bags were full of mannequin heads. I'm sure this probably terrified the person who opened the bags when they first took a look. I'm glad it wasn't anything harmful, but there definitely is something weird about this discovery that feels very ominous. At the end of the day, I am just glad that no one got hurt. In our number six spot today, we have this Nebraska semi-truck discovery. Nebraska police pulled over a semi-truck on January 22nd after it had been clocked going 85 miles per hour in a 65 miles per hour zone, and it was also said that the driver wasn't quite in his lane. Upon further inspection, police discovered that not only did the driver appear to be under the influence, his truck was also carrying a few illicit substances. Authorities revealed that the truck had several hidden concealment points which is consistent with the substance mm -hmm. transport. Of course, the driver ended up being taken into custody where he is awaiting bail and the truck was towed from the scene for further investigation. In our number five spot today, we have this pre-approved vaccine controversy. Since the start of the pandemic, companies have been in a race to create a vaccine that can help return our world to normal. Of course, now in 2021, there are a few options for vaccines that are being distributed, while other companies are in the trial testing phases to ensure that the vaccines are safe for humans. These testing trials are absolutely critical as there is a level of trust with these kinds of things that is imperative to their success. Well, a biotechnology company recently came under fire after their COVID vaccine called Covaxin received regulatory approval from the Drugs Controller General of India, despite it not having gone through stage three trials completely. It was only approved for emergency use, so it's not likely it was about to be widely distributed, but it certainly feels safer to wait until it is gone and fully completed all testing trials. In our number four spot today, we have this real estate agent creepy discovery. A West Virginia real estate agent was looking around a house she was selling when she came across something that literally made her scream. She unsuspectingly opened the basement door and found a statue of a boy, which certainly would make anyone jump at first. If you thought you were alone and opened a door to this, for a split second, I am sure it would spook you right out as you might think it was a real person. Aside from that, the statue looks very creepy, like it honestly could be cursed. This statue with the backdrop of an unfinished basement definitely creeps me out just looking at the photo of it. The realtor explained that although she is used to seeing weird and funny things in houses, 
this is the first time one has scared her so much she screamed. In our number three spot today we have this Australian mom's discovery. As summer holidays were coming to a close and school was about to begin in Australia, one mom decided it was time to get her kids ready for the school year. She grabbed their backpacks in order to fill them up with new school supplies. That is when she grabbed one of her daughter's backpacks only to open it up and find her lunch bag that still had food in it from when summer holidays began last year. Of course, this is an honest mistake and pretty much completely harmless, aside from the mom having the horrific task of figuring out what to do with the rotten food and undoubtedly smelly Tupperware container. This mom definitely deserves some extra love after that. In our number two spot today, we have this mechanic discovery. A mechanic's TikTok has gone viral after a completely shocking discovery was made. His username is chaos underscore no but I believe that the account is now private. Apparently a customer had brought in her car to get it inspected after she believed her ex-boyfriend had placed a tracking device on it. The mechanic was unfortunately able to prove her fears correct when he found exactly what she suspected was there. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any update on what exactly happened after they found the device, and I'm not exactly sure what can be done in this situation, but I am very glad they found it and really glad that the mechanic took the woman seriously and really searched for it. In the comments of the video, there were a lot of people sharing similar experiences, and I honestly had no idea that this was such a common occurrence. In the number one spot today, we have Karis LaVert. Karis LaVert is an NBA player with the Indiana Pacers. He was first drafted in 2016 by the Pacers, but was then traded to the Brooklyn Nets, where he played until he was traded back to the Pacers this year. When you're traded to a new team, there is a mandatory health screening that you have to go through. Karis was doing this screening and received an MRI when doctors discovered a mass on his left kidney. On January 25th, he underwent a successful surgery to remove this mass, and it was confirmed that it was a type of kidney cancer called renal cell carcinoma. It is said that Karis left Luckily doesn't need any further treatment and he should be making a full recovery which is amazing news. He explained how the trade potentially saved his life because he was feeling 100% healthy and had no symptoms telling him that anything was wrong. The mandatory screening for this trade let him know what was going on in his body and I am so glad that they caught it in time. Number 10, Amazon Tools. The Amazon rainforest is home to many unique and dangerous creatures as well as unsolved mysteries mysteries and lost civilizations. But did you know that the Amazon was actually once home to giants? At least this evidence discovered in 2012 seems to point to that being the truth. A group of Ecuadorian researchers ventured into the thick forest in order to follow ancient legends of a city of giants, and they actually found it. They found massive stone structures and even a large pyramid. The stones being so precisely cut and arranged that it could not have been just formed by the forces of nature. Within these structures, they also found massive stone tools that were too large for any normal sized human to use, including hammers and chisels and other building tools. While some people do still chalk it up to natural formations, the team and many others stand by their belief that this city was once home to a race of giants. Number 9. Giant Skeleton In 1890 in France, a man named Georges Vachet made a skeletal discovery in a Bronze Age cemetery in Castle No. Three separate bone fragments were found that came from both the arm and the leg, or humerus and tibia bones for all the scientists out there. The bones seem to date back to the Neolithic era, which was around 10,000 to 4,000 BC, and they are thought to be evidence of one of the largest human beings ever. The man who discovered them used the size of the bone fragments to estimate the total size of the person, which would have been around a 11 and a half feet tall. In 1892, the bones were sent to a university in France to be carefully studied by a professor of pathological anatomy, him admitting that the bones represented a quote, very tall race. A few years later, giant skulls were found in another French cemetery and also sent away for even more study. Number eight, Bigfoot. The first discovery of Sasquatch or Bigfoot
Bigfoot, Footprints goes all the way back to the year 1811. Since then, there have been countless reports of Bigfoot sightings and encounters. And with the invention of photo and video cameras came massive amounts of apparent real footage of Bigfoot. Bigfoot is most often described as being a giant humanoid creature around 15 feet tall who tends to hang out in the woods and ignore fabricated mating calls from Bigfoot hunters on their television shows. These sightings also span all the way across the entire world, each country and culture having their own representation and name for the mysterious creature. From the Russian Yeti to the Australian Yowie, they're apparently everywhere. So while many photos and recordings of Bigfoot have been debunked, there are many people who truly believe the Bigfoot is real, and who's to say they couldn't potentially be a long-lost race of giants who had to move into the woods as society evolved. Number 7. West Virginia Giants The giant skeletons discovered in France aren't the only reports of giant remains being found. They have also been found in American soil, specifically in West Virginia. In 1774, a man named Jack Parsons was walking along a flooded river when he saw a bone sticking out of the ground. And like any normal person would do, he pulled it out, discovering it was a femur, but it was almost twice the size of his own. Alongside it, he found more bones and discovered a skeleton that was around 8 feet tall. In 1838, excavators found even more remains that were also much taller than the average person. In the 1850s, even more were found, though they soon went missing and were thought to have been stolen and sold. Over the years, even more remains were found in the late 1800s, one skeleton even being over 10 feet tall. The giant town and other places across West Virginia have even more stories of discoveries of this race of giants. Number 6. Robert Wadlow Arguably the most famous real giant who you've probably heard of before is a man who was named Robert Wadlow. If you have read the Guinness Book of World Records or visited one of their walkthrough museums, you have probably seen his picture or stood next to his giant life-size statue. And yes, this guy was actually real and he was actually that tall. He was just brushing 9 feet tall at the time of his death in the summer of 1940. He was born in 1918 and at the time no one knew just how tall he was going to be, as he was an average size baby weighing 8.7 pounds, which is less than I weighed when I was born but to be fair I was a big baby. He then quickly started to shoot up and by the time he was 8 years old he was almost 6 feet tall. For reference the average 8 year old is usually around 4 feet tall. He became a celebrity for his height, starring in the circus and doing a promotional tour for a shoe company. Unfortunately, his gigantism led to numerous medical issues and he died at the age of only 22. Number 5. Greek Mythology Now let's turn around and take a look back at some more theoretical proof of giants, some famous giants from different cultures and legends. I know you may not think of this as real evidence, but I just love digging into these myths and depictions, and if so many different cultures across the world are writing about giants, this could be evidence that they're real, right? So let's start with the Greeks. Atlas was the name of a titan that went to war against Olympus. As we know, the titans lost and Atlas was cursed to hold up the sky for the rest of eternity. Atlas also had a run-in with Perseus, who was a slayer of monsters. Atlas tried to scare Perseus away and in response, Perseus took Medusa's head out of his bag and turned Atlas to stone, creating the range that is now known as the Atlas Mountains. But hey, at least he doesn't have to hold up the sky anymore. Number 4. Irish Giants Irish mythology believes that a race of giants known as the Fomorians were actually the original settlers of Ireland. Balor was the king of these one-eyed giants and was also the god of death. It was said that anyone who looked at him would die instantly. Because of this, he constantly kept his eye closed until it was absolutely necessary. A prophecy said that he would be killed by his own grandson, so he locked his daughter away to prevent her from having any children. But this didn't work as a minor god snuck in and got comfortable with his daughter and they loved each other very much and she had three kids. But Balor was still thinking with his head and so he threw all three kids into the ocean. Problem solved, right? Wrong. One of the sons survived and was raised by the god of the sea. The kid grew up, led a bunch of Irish gods into battle, and he killed Balor by ripping out his eye. 
Goodbye, King of Giants, you really tried your best. Number three, the Bible. When you think of giants in the Bible, you may think of the story of Goliath, a giant who was defeated by a regular sized shepherd named David. Goliath was a champion from the city of Gath, which is a place where a race of giants apparently originated from. His exact size is up in the air, but many people believe he was around nine foot seven and wore a large amount of bronze armor. And here's how the story goes. David goes out to face Goliath, holding the fate of his people in his hands. So of course he's armed with a very menacing weapon, a slingshot. David uses his trusty slingshot to fire a rock, which hits Goliath right between his eyes. And Goliath falls down and dies immediately. Pretty good shot. David and Goliath has become an infamous story for representing the underdog. Though my personal favorite story about underdogs is the movie Underdog, released in 2007. Number two, Gog Magog. If you know me, then you know I'm constantly looking for names to name my future children, and this one is definitely a strong contender. Gog Magog is the name of the last British giant. A Welshman wrote a book about how early Britain was inhabited by a race of giants. One of those being Gog Magog, 12 feet tall and able to easily uproot an oak tree. One day the giants attacked Brutus, descendant of the Trojans, and all the giants were killed except for good old Goggy. Brutus took Gog Magog to his second in command who was apparently super into giant wrestling. The two wrestled and Gog Magog was going pretty ham and crushed a few of the guy's ribs, but this didn't kill the guy and instead just made him super angry. Fueled by his rage, the man was able to pick up Gog Magog carry him up a hill, toss him off a cliff to his death, ridding the world of Britain's last giant. Rest in peace, Gog Magog. Number one, Hrungnir. Giants exist all over Norse mythology, but the one that is known as the biggest and baddest is called Rungnir. One day, Odin, the leader of the Norse gods of Asgard, challenged the giant to a horse race, which turns out to be a little unfair when you take into account the fact that Odin was riding his magical six-legged horse and Rungnir just had a normal horse. He of course lost and Odin at least felt a little bad about it, so he invited the giant back to Asgard for a drink. Like me, he couldn't handle his alcohol and started getting a little rowdy, saying that he would kill all of the gods of Asgard except for two goddesses which he would bring back with him to the realm of the giants. The Asgardians were like, hey bro, that's kinda not cool, and told Thor to come deal with this clown. So the two met for battle, Rungnir wearing stone armor and with a massive stone as his weapon. Thor picked up his magical hammer Mjolnir and it broke through both the stone and Rungnir's face killing him. I'm noticing a pattern in these stories that the giant always ends up dying and probably why they're not around today. Kicking off the list at number 10, let's dive in. Ooh, Barracuda. Exploring the deep is dangerous if you're a diver, of course, not because of the deadly ocean life surrounding your every direction, but because if you come up too quickly, major health problems will follow. But if not that, probably a deadly Barracuda, equally as scary. This deep discovery was made by user Arira95. I'm pulling real events for this one from real deep sea divers. I'm going to the real content for this one, so buckle up. One time, when my parents visited Mexico, they went diving and my mom was slightly lower than my dad looking at the ocean floor. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her and it was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive at this point, so it was sparkling. My mom looked below at all the critters when my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. I'm sweating reading this. She looked up and a barracuda was directly in front of her staring intently at that shiny necklace. She slowly moved up her hand to cover the necklace and they slowly and calmly moved away from it and it took off without bothering them anymore. But still pretty unsettling and taught my mom to be a little more aware of her surroundings when she's diving. I mean, fair, but I mean, no one expects a barracuda. Also, if your mom wants to dive with chains on, that's pretty sick. You won't catch her slacking. Even in the depths of the sea, she's like, I'm ready. I don't care who shows up. I don't care who I bump into. Water shoes and bling, check and check. Let's go diving. Number nine, venomous sea snakes. Last year in the deep waters off Australia's coast, of course it's Australia, always Australia, a sea snake that was once thought to be extinct has been rediscovered. How fun. He's like, ah, psych, you thought. Just when you thought the ocean couldn't get even more dangerous, now we got new sea snakes to worry about. The short-nosed sea snake hasn't been seen in 23 years, and they would often live near Ashmore Reef. But last year, divers found one 67 meters below the surface in the twilight zone, which is pretty wild. 
just lurking in the dark, just hanging out, meditating. The Australian Institute of Marine Science is responsible for this discovery, and the team calls this a second chance to protect and further understand the species. And an up-close personal encounter is brought to life from this diver. Apparently, this happens from time to time before major storms. Snakes can sense an oncoming storm, so what they try and do is latch onto something heading in the direction towards shore, so they don't have to burn energy and they can just grab onto like a barrel or something and then just, you know, make its way there. Pretty smart. So this diver was exploring, nothing was going crazy or anything like that, and then he felt a snake wrap onto his leg because he felt a storm was coming in. The diver didn't even know that the storm was coming. The snake did, and he wrapped its snake self around his leg. As soon as I was in the shallows, it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. That was from a diver named Specialist Celery. Great name, also terrifying experience. I don't like snakes in water or on land. Next, number eight, surprise tiger shark. Yeah, not something you wanna see diving in the deep, a tiger shark, a glowing shark, left shark, I don't care. I want none of the shark smoke. This deep sea discovery comes from user Stormcutter, sick name, a little bit better of a diver name. They say, I know a guy who was out diving for crayfish and lobster by the ocean. Also, the I know a guy trick, it was totally you, don't lie to us. Crayfish often hide under the rocks, so as he was diving, a tiger shark emerged from a cave and rammed him, breaking his arm and ribs. <laughs> this guy got shucked by a shark, that's insane. He said the shark was testing him out. Yeah, I'd say. That's pretty sweet, man. I'm glad you survived, honestly. I bet you couldn't wait to tell people what happened. You're like, oh, my ribs? Yeah, I got sideswiped by a tiger shark. Yeah, he's feeling testy. You know how tiger sharks do. If you're wondering what that experience may have looked like, uh, this is footage of a rare tiger shark in New Zealand lurking in the deep. Number seven, Humpback Mama. This deep dive happened about a year ago. A diver named Sidetrack38, that's their username, not their legal name, although that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> Sidetrack38, he's like, what's up? They were exploring the ocean one afternoon when all of a sudden they got charged by a mother humpback whale. The divers shared their experience online, saying, her curious calf had swam around us and we were between her and the calf. Two of us never even saw her coming. We were watching the baby, but our third diver, saw her come. She kicked down and swam under us last minute. We didn't see anything until that 60 foot freight train passed just underneath us. Whales are beautiful. They're beautiful but terrifying creatures, my friend. Glad you didn't get a broken rib or back in this case because whales, they like to go pretty deep. Just a few. Just trying to figure us Incredible. out. Incredible. Oh, yeah, this is amazing. Justin, you want all reds <laughs> off? Look at that view. I hope we're getting screen captures of this. Number six, Mako Shark. Mako sharks are one of the fastest sharks in the world. I'll start by saying that. Just get that fact in your head. Given this list so far, I would also start sweating if I were you. This is a scary one. This deep dive horror story comes from username One Dumb Diver. Great name. They clearly made this account just to share this occasion. So let's dive in. Nowadays, we dive with shark shields, which emit electronic pulses that freak the sharks out and keep them away. But back then, what we used was essentially a chainmail sleeve. The idea being that sharks hate the taste of metal, so if you give it your arm, it'll bite down, decide you're gross, and then move along. So I wait, it comes over, and I make a perfect move to give it my arm. However, just before the crunch, the crunch, it occurred to me that I had left my sleeve on my bed. Now I had a huge open gashing wound on my arm from the bite in open water, and I trailed blood everywhere. Not an ideal scenario. So once the shock finally wore off, you realize that you're in salt water, and salt and open wounds, they don't feel good. In a panic, I dropped my weight belt and shot up to the surface without any sort of waiting period. Not great. Because I hadn't been paying attention to the currents, I was approximately a quarter mile downstream of my boat, which meant that I had to swim back up to it. After getting bitten by a shark, imagine having to swim, that is a nightmare scenario. Glad you're okay. Also, you're not a dumb diver. You're just, you're experiencing the things. You're figuring it out. You're doing great. You're brave. I don't even like going in lakes. Number five, more sea snakes. Coming from Patrick667, about a year ago as well, they posted, so three days ago, I went snorkeling off Mimba Island in Zanzibar. Everything went normal and we started heading back. So I grabbed my net and I put my black fins, my black mask, snorkel and black wetsuit inside. Once back ashore, I grab my bag, jump off the boat and head to the rental office to return said equipment. At that point, I feel my bag is moving somehow. At first look, it seemed like a flat black worm squirming quickly. After rotating the bag, I realized I was looking at only the tail of a one meter long black sea snake, one of the most venomous reptiles ever, trying to get out of the net. 
like in the lobby. How it got there, I have no freaking clue. That is a nightmare scenario. Imagine being like, thanks so much, I had a great time. Here's a sand dollar. <laughs> also, don't mind the venomous snake. Number four, the frilled shark. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, just hanging out, just lurking about 870 meters below the surface. So if you're anywhere around there, watch out. This one looks like an eel almost. It's so scary looking, it's so slippery and quick. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight in the dark. They don't need to see to attack you, which is pretty terrifying considering all these deep dive stories are all in the pitch black. So unless you're a deep diver, you're not really gonna run into the frilled shark. Have you ever dealt with one of these? Are you a diver? Are you watching this because you're a diver? Please comment down below if you are. Comment some of your personal experiences. These were a nightmare to read. I couldn't even finish half of them. Everything is so dangerous and so fast underwater. Number three, snapping shrimp. This little guy can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you, that's how fast it is. You won't see him coming, and neither did this diver. Here's a clip of a mantis shrimp punching through a diver's gear. Yeah, right through their water shoes. Bam! Ah. Ow, that really hurt. They're so quick, oh my God, they're tiny, but they, they really hit. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs. These little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers per hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created and because this, you know, Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the left hook, the following pop is around 200 decibels. The sound alone can stun its prey and if they're lucky, it sometimes kills them. That's how you wanna go out. You don't wanna go out with one of these Superman punches to the neck. Number two, comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy shit every year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence are for sure aliens, while others are just natural predators. That looks scary. Like the comb star, for example. This guy was not in Finding Nemo. He would have been a weird addition. A comb star is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin, which is this deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis. Yeah, Finding Nemo, that movie would be over in eight minutes if this guy was there. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. So if you have a mice problem, Honestly, you can call one guy. It's a very specific weird call, but I know how you can do it. A little bit of tetrodoxin. Tetrodoxin? Tecrodoxin. That's what it's called. And finally, coming in at number one, the electric eel. Awesome. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Great. The moray eel, first of all, don't do what he just did. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. That's not smart. It's not a great dame. You don't want to do that. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off in like two seconds. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. Yeah, just like that MGMT song that's now stuck in our heads. As its name suggests, there's types of eels that can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti. Appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery, this eel can release a shock up to 860 volts, which is more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry. Nice, we love nature, I'm never swimming again. Number 10. 7,000 year old execution grave. In 2013 near Halberstadt, archeologists were excavating a Neolithic settlement site when they came across a grisly discovery. The team, led by Christian Meyer, found a burial pit filled with nearly complete skeletons of nine people who lived approximately 7,000 years ago. Through testing of isotopes in their bones and teeth, which are different between people depending on diet and other factors, scientists deduced that these people were from a different location than the rest of the bodies that were buried in the area. The nine skeletons were also in positions that would indicate that they were thrown into the pit somewhat haphazardly, as opposed to being buried ceremoniously like some of the others near the same site were. The most disturbing part is how this grave differs from other graves around the country. In all of these other sites, the dead have all perished in different ways, as made clear with the forensic analysis of the bones, from spears to blunt force to natural causes. However, in the Halberstadt site, all of the dead have the same fatal wound on the back of the head, implying that these people were executed in the same precise way with a blow from a blunt weapon in the same spot. The archaeologists believe that this, combined with the fact that the dead found were mostly men, shows that these people were an attacking party who were clearly unsuccessful in their raid. Number 9. Sunken Ship uh, Before I tell you this next dark discovery, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that we can keep bringing you amazing content. First found in 2020, this 400 year old wooden ship was found at the bottom of the river Trava, insanely well preserved. Researchers say that since wood rots so quickly underwater in this region, they were surprised at how much of the ship remained intact. 
The ship is believed to be a single masted cargo vessel between 20 and 25 meters long, and sunk standing almost completely upright. Around 150 wooden cargo barrels were found in the wreck that were filled with quicklime, an ingredient for mortar used in stonework made from burning limestone. Because of this specialized cargo, scientists believe that the ship was sailing from Scandinavia to regions of northern Germany that don't have any limestone. Marine researchers have been amazed at how well preserved the ship is, and they believe this is due to a layer of mud that happened to cover it when it finally rested on the bottom of the river. The mud kept the wood from rotting, but it also protected it from a type of saltwater clam known as the shipworm, which is very, very good at destroying submerged wood. Research and underwater excavations are still ongoing, and the team even believes that they may find remains of some of the long-lost crew that was aboard when the ship met its final resting place. Number 8 found in the foliage. In 1980, 69-year-old Paul L. went for a walk in the forest near the town of Bruckburg. He did not tell anyone where he was going, but he left a farewell note for his family as he knew that this would be his last walk. His family searched for years, but he was never found. And in 2009, a teenage boy was walking through the same forest and noticed something strange, a bone lying on the ground. And after he brought it to the attention of the police, law enforcement did a thorough search of the area and discovered a skeleton 11 meters off the ground in a spruce tree. This chilling find is only amplified by the fact that both the body and a pistol were tied to the same tree. Police investigators believe that Paul L. climbed the tree, tied himself to it, and took his own life. And this is what made the body so difficult to find. I mean, who looks for a skeleton in a tree? Number seven, German Stonehenge. Most of us know about Stonehenge, a prehistoric monument in England consisting of circles made with massive stone slabs. No one's 100% sure who made it or what it was used for other than rituals, but it's not the only place of its kind in the world. In 1991, a plane was flying towards Berlin and someone noticed a strange structure below. When people went to investigate, they discovered this henge. It consists of concentric circles made out of massive wooden poles. The largest of the circles measures 115 meters or 380 feet, which actually makes it larger than England's Stonehenge. Archaeologists have since found multiple burial sites containing the remains of men and women of all ages who appear to have died in a sort of ritual sacrifice, some of which appear to be quite brutal. Weapons such as axes, along with drinking vessels and butchered animal bones were also found at the site. However, new excavations have found evidence of settlements as well, implying that not only was this place used for rituals and solstice celebrations, but also as a place for locals to live. Number six, stashed secrets. In August of 2021, a history teacher was cleaning and making repairs to his aunt's house in Hagen after there had been severe flooding damage. When he removed a piece of rotted board, he found a small one foot wide hidden area, and inside he saw a newspaper dated in 1945. When he continued to look further, he discovered many German military artifacts from World War II, including a portrait of the mustached leader of Germany, brass knuckles, a revolver, military patches, and many, many letters and documents. It's believed that the house was once the local headquarters for the National Socialist People's Welfare Organization, or the NSV at the time, which was in charge of doling out the riches stolen from Jewish groups and individuals during the war. In other words, a safe house for bad guys. But the family says that they had no idea the history of the building when they purchased it in the 60s. Things were so haphazardly thrown and hidden in the wall that researchers believe that it must have been done in quite a hurry when the Allied troops closed in on the city. With no time to dispose of the important documents, they hid them in the walls, making for quite a discovery 76 years later. Number five, reused graves. In August of 2022, archaeologists were doing a preventative dig at the site of a newly planned rainwater retention basin in Tutlingen and came across a late Stone Age culture grave dating back to 3000 BC. While no human remains from that era have been found, the other items in the burial site imply that they were graves, mostly the pottery made from broken ceramic indicative of that time period, which would have been adorned with textures and pictures for the dead. However, there was another discovery made shortly after, in the same spot. More items were uncovered by archaeologists, including swords, jewelry, and drinking glasses, but this time they were from the Middle Ages, around 500 AD. That's right, a medieval gravesite on top of one from the Stone Ages, meaning that this same burial ground was used again 3,500 years after it was the first time. Excavation is still ongoing, so who knows what else they'll find. Number four, the Unicorn Cave Carving. Deep in the Hartz Mountains lies the Einhornhole, or the Unicorn Cave. It got its name from treasure hunters who thought that the remains they discovered there were those of the mythological animal, when most likely they were something else entirely, the bones of a prehistoric giant deer. 
In 2014, researchers discovered a 51,000-year-old art piece carved into the toe bone of a species of deer that existed during the Ice Age. Originally thought to be butchering marks, further experiments showed that the marks made were intentional and that the bone had most likely been boiled first to make it softer and easier to carve. This shows how early on humans were creating what could be called art, with the detailing being deliberate and complex, and it's a tragedy that so much of this has been lost to time. The story goes back even further, because what researchers found near the same area in 1990 will shock you. Number 3. Hominin Weaponry Before the bone carving was found, archaeologists were already uncovering nearby sites, and in 1990 they discovered something truly remarkable. Perfectly preserved weapons, artifacts, and bones were uncovered that were approximately 300,000 years old, and that is absolutely insane to me. Ancient throwing sticks, push lances, and other tools were found, some of which scientists have yet to still divine the function of. Closer examination showed how the weapons had worn from use, and that told researchers what they were used for and how often. There were even marks in some of them that seemed to have been made from chipping bone. Now, who knows if that was from an animal or another early human? It's almost impossible to tell. But the fact that these exist at all is amazing to me. Number two, the Headless Horse, man. The legend of the Headless Horseman is well known around the world, and many cultures have their own version of the story of a headless rider on a dark horse come to do evil. But in Germany, they seem to have gotten it mixed around. In an ancient cemetery near Knittlingen, archaeologists revealed a perplexing discovery. In a 1,400-year-old grave, there was a man buried, and next to him was a horse that was missing its head. Further searching in the surrounding area showed that many of the graves had jewelry like pearl necklaces and bracelets, as well as everyday goods like food stored in ceramic pots buried alongside the bodies. This led researchers to believe that they were not sacrifices or offerings, but a gift to be used in the afterlife. And the gifts you were given depended on your status. And since this man was buried alongside most of a horse, it would imply that the man who rested there was of great esteem, and perhaps even owned that horse, and can now ride with them in the afterlife. Either way, headless skeletons of any kind are creepy. We all know of the dark and terrible things that occurred in Germany during World War II, but our number one dark discovery came right at the end of the war. When Allied troops entered the town of Dachau, they thought that they were ready for anything whether that was German officers ready to fight, or booby traps laid by Axis forces. But nothing could compare them for what they saw when they entered the camp. But before they even entered the camp, soldiers were put off by a foul odor. They believed that they were upwind of some sort of chemical factory, but they soon discovered what was known as the death train where bodies of thousands of innocent people were laid with no regard to their dignity. These people had their lives taken for absolutely no reason, and when they were discovered, soldiers forced members of the German army and other sympathizers to help give them a proper burial. With the arrival of the Allied troops in Dachau and the liberation of the camp and its survivors, the war was all but won, and the evil German leader took his own life the next day. The dark history of the camp can still be felt by visitors to this day and helps people learn of the worst of humanity and the best of humanity who fought to keep the evils at bay. Number 10, an odd man in the woods. I was a park ranger on a small island, the only year round resident. I loved the off season with 400 acres all to myself, no phone, no internet. I was in the old forest one night when I saw a smear of bright white off trail ahead. I figured it was one of the small herd of white rumped deer, but it moved up the side of the trail before I could get a better look. I heard a sharp bark and froze, then crept forward a few feet. I reached the fork and was straining to see ahead when I heard the crunch and crack of something in the brush behind me. I spun and saw a pale man, six foot or taller, with dark hair, wearing a bright white t-shirt about 30 feet in front of me. He gave me a lunatic grin, barked again, a hard, sharp Ha! Huh. Then turned and ran off into the woods. I stood still, scanning the trees, my hand on my weapon. After not hearing anything for a few moments, I backtracked my way to the main trail, then, terrified, sped walked all the way back to my cabin. I don't know who or what it could have been. The way he was running around off the trail convinced me that he knew the island very well, better than me for sure, and that he was hiding out somewhere, but I never found any evidence of a secret lair, and I never saw him again. Again. Number 9. Small Humanoid Creature 
This happened about 8 years ago when I was 21 years old and working as a camp counselor in New York state. The place is basically a bunch of cabins in the woods on top of a mountain, each cabin half a mile apart from the other so you're pretty isolated in the woods. One night at about 1am I was sneaking off to meet my camp girlfriend. Suddenly I heard rustling in the woods and I stopped to investigate it. There are bears slash other animals so I was expecting something like that. Then this 3 foot tall humanoid type thing suddenly jumps out of the bushes and looks at me. It's too dark for me to make out any of its features other than it was standing on two feet, had two arms, and basically looked just like a miniature person without any features. I was curious to what it was so I started walking towards it and it spooked bolting back into the woods. I'll never forget how mechanical it looked as it took off running. I have never seen anything on two legs run that quickly so I was pretty confused about what it was. As much as I try to make sense of it, I still to this day have no idea what it was. It was very human, but too short to be a human, and I don't know how a human could run that fast anyway. Now I feel like this could have been some sort of animal perhaps, but it's still creepy. Number 8 crying baby. My grandfather used to be the equivalent of a park ranger down in Mexico. He was in charge of patrolling the farms and lands mainly due to people growing illegal substances. One day he said he was patrolling this ranch late at night shift and he heard a baby crying. Now the land is pretty flat so he looked all ways and saw nothing. He thought maybe it was some goats out in the far as they can sound like crying babies, but as he's walking his route he hears the same sound, looks up in the sky and and swears he saw a witch with black clothing and everything flying towards a mountain. He panicked, ran to his car, and drove off as fast as he could. Now, this could have been a bird or something, but being alone at night outside, your mind can definitely play tricks on you. Number seven, the blue lights. I used to work as a ranger at Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. There's a place on the ranch called Urca Mesa and there's all sorts of local legends about it being haunted. One of the stories about the Mesa is that at night you can see weird lights coming from the top. I've been there for 4 summers and even camped on top of the Mesa and had never seen one until one night. A scout troop and I were camped on the back side of the Mesa. I hadn't told them any of the haunted stories at this point when one of the kids points up to the Mesa and asks what's that? I figured he's seeing some flashlight coming down the trail from the Mesa because I know there's supposed to be another group camping with us so I tell him that. I turn to look and the lights weren't coming from where the trail is, they were off to the right and it's not a flashlight. It's like the light was coming from behind the Mesa or from a fire that you can't see. Only it wasn't orange red like firelight, it was blue. Creepiest thing ever because if the blue lights are real, what else is real? At this point though, I'm still thinking it's the other group, but like 15 minutes later, they roll into camp and we can still see the lights. Spooky. <laughs> Number 6. Perfectly severed deer head found on trail. Ugh. I'm a ranger at Yellowstone. A couple weeks ago I was exploring the Lamar Valley about 11 miles from the nearest road and even further to the park boundary. There in the middle of the trail is a perfectly severed deer head. No blood, no raggedness at the severance. Perfectly intact. Now this is weird because I have seen wolf and bear spoils and I used to find cougar prey remains in SD with radio tracking just after the cougar made them. This was not any of those things. The head was completely uneaten, eyes, tongue, everything intact. Even the ravens hadn't touched it yet. No catching, no droppings. Right smack in the middle of the trail, but again, no blood. Even a human doing it made no conventional sense. It was a doe, so it had no antlers, plus why leave it in the trail? Whole thing, even in broad daylight, gave me the chills. Just an ocean of waving grass, bison calmly grazing, and a perfectly clear deer head on the path. Now this sounds like something straight out of a horror movie, and I am terrified. Number 5. Dead Body I was a wildland firefighter, specifically a hotshot, for the US Department of Agriculture. We saw a lot of backcountry and national forests that no one ever saw. Once on a fire in South California, we helicoptered deep into the woods then hiked 8 or so miles. We were way out when we discovered human remains, clothes, etc. We opened the wallet and find a note. 
then found the thing he used with one bullet missing. We examined the skull and discovered the guy used it on himself. Very creepy in person. A crew flew out and investigated, piecing together his ID and missing person reports. They discovered he'd been out there for more than a decade. Number 4. Abandoned Tent The oddest thing was the abandoned camp next to the trail. Camping outside of designated campsites is a big no-no, and I was surprised as one day I was walking and found a tent set up directly next to the trail. The trail ran along a nice stream and was a very tranquil spot. Inside I found a cloth sleeping bag, some dirty clothes, lots of food, big cans of spaghettios, and what looked like some leftovers from a refried beans and rice dinner, and a teddy bear. Everything reeked of cigarette smoke. I was reluctant to confiscate everything and leave the individual out there with nothing, but I did take all the food and pack it into a secure food storage box. I left a note explaining where I had taken the food and that they needed to move camp. Now I was unable to return to the tent for two weeks, way too long to leave it sitting there next to the trail. It was basically untouched when I returned. Some trail crew folks had checked it out and let me know, but that was probably it. I packed up the rest and hauled it out. I spent some time poking around in the area, but never saw any other signs of life. It was obviously someone who was not prepared for camping out in the backcountry, judging by the food, equipment, and the teddy bear. I just don't know. Everything, clothing, gear, etc. indicated it was just one individual. Number 3 moving light. Park ranger here. Another ranger and I were out on a search and rescue call once. The missing person was a man in his 20s. He had gone hiking and had not returned the day that he intended to. When we got the call, it was nighttime, but we hiked a few miles and set up camp on a ridge that had a pretty good view. He had gone into the woods prepared, so we decided to wait until daylight before beginning the search. About 2am I get up and I am peeing when I see a moving light at the base of the cliffs across the valley a few miles away. Looks like a flashlight beam. I tell the other ranger and we make the decision to keep waiting for daylight. The next morning we decide to check it out in the area and bring this guy home. We got to approximately where I saw the light the night before and started calling his name. Soon we find his body at the base of the cliff. He had fallen 60 feet on his head. The body was badly mangled. We radioed back that it has now become a recovery instead of a rescue. At this point, the other ranger yells at me to come look at this. Lying 20 feet from the man's body was his mag light. It seemed odd, but I thought nothing of it until the other ranger reminded me of the light the night before. It kind of gave me the creeps, but I still dismissed it. Before too long, the coroner arrived and inspected the body. After he took the body back to the lab, he said that the man had been dead for at least 48 hours before we found the body. All of a sudden, the oh crap alarm went off in my brain. I knew that it couldn't be possible. I had the the coroner review his work, same results. I tried to find an explanation for the light I had seen, perhaps other hikers, but one search and rescue guy had stayed at the only trailhead in the area all night, no one had come or gone. To this day, I have no clue what I saw that night, but it freaked me out. Number 2. The Mysterious Stranger I once led a trip to the top of Mount Sterling in North Carolina. It's a tough climb to get to the top and about 6 miles from the nearest road. I was leading a group of 8 middle schoolers and had one co-instructor. We were camping out on the top of the mountain and it was a beautiful night with a full moon. I laid on a hammock enjoying the scenery and noticed something moving on the trail. Bears are common in this area so I perked up. As it got closer, I could tell it was a person. We were in the middle of nowhere and there was someone hiking up the trail with no headlamp or any gear. They arrived at the top of the mountain where we were and just stopped. I watched as what appeared to be a man survey our camp. I could really only see the outline of him. He stood there for what seemed like 30 minutes but may have been 10. He then turned and sat down under a tree facing our camp. He was sitting up in a way that I knew he wasn't trying to sleep. He just sat there staring at our camp. I had no idea what to do. I decided to wait it out. I waited just staring at the man while he stared at my camp. Camp. This went on until about 3.30 a.m. Then he stood up, took a moment to survey the camp a few minutes longer, and then went back down the trail he came up on. To this day, I have no idea what that was all about, and it freaks me out. That freaks me out too. <laughs> And coming in at number one, search for hikers runs through super creepy clearing. There was a group that hadn't been heard from after their scheduled return from a camping trip. A coworker and I headed out in the general direction the group had set off in. We'd been hiking for most of the day and seen nothing. 
We're about 35 kilometers into the woods at this point, and we start noticing odd things. Sticks carved like spears stuck into the ground, weird carvings in the trees, a children stuffed animal hanging from a noose up in a tree. This place was nowhere near any roads, it wasn't on regular trails people would go on in the area. The really eerie thing was that everything was freshly carved. Somebody had been there within a couple of hours of us and made these things. I noticed a bit of a shirt that had caught on a small tree and ripped along with some shoe prints. We were thinking, great, maybe we're close to the group, when a radio call comes in though. The group had been found 20 kilometers east of us and they're calling everyone back. So what did we find? I have no clue, but my coworker and I headed out of those woods fast and yeah. I would too. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the mass grave. Last year in 2021, archaeologists who were excavating the ruins of Chan Chan, which was once the capital of the Chimu Empire, they stumbled upon a mass grave that held the remains of 25 people. Most of the skeletons were that of a woman, and they are said to have been wrapped in a sort of cotton fabric before being wrapped in a material made of plant tissue. Some of the women were even placed in a seated position with their legs bent, some with needles, chalk, and sewing objects placed near them. There were also quite a few ceramic objects found in the grave as well. The abundance of artifacts found here has led researchers to believe that these people were considered elite members of the society. The empire that these people are believed to have belonged to was one that is said to have fallen to the Inca sometime between 1465 and 1470. In our number 9 spot today, we have the 500 year old tomb. Just over a month ago at the end of June, scientists unearthed an Inca era tomb that laid underneath a home in Peru's capital, Lima. The tomb is said to be at at least 500 years old, and the lead archaeologist of the Discovery team said that it contained, quote, multiple funerary bundles. This tomb is said to likely be holding the elite from the time, and the current owner of the home the tomb was found under was absolutely bursting with pride. He explained that he hoped that the find would create a better appreciation for the rich history around all of those who live in the area. The find only came because the owner of the home was planning on some new building things. Because of this, there was a required archaeological survey and thank goodness for that, clearly. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Nazca Lines. If you were to head to the Nazca Desert, just about 200 miles southeast of Lima in southern Peru, you'd find the most famous geoglyphs in the world, the Nazca Lines. Researchers believe that these lines might be something like two millennia old, and other than how they are incredible works of art, they are completely baffling. The geoglyphs are more than 800 long white lines etched into the desert, as well as 300 geometric shapes and 70 different animal figures. The biggest shape stretches about 1,200 feet across, which leads to my point about why these lines are so incredibly fascinating. These images can only be fully seen from high above in the air. So thinking back 2,000 years ago, how did humans make these without the vantage points we have now? I'm not exactly sure, but it is definitely nothing shy of amazing. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Paleo Burrow. Back in 2010, a geologist named Amilcar Adami heard rumblings of an insanely impressive cave that was located in Brazil. He knew he had to check it out, and after asking around a bit, he eventually found out the location of it. When he first arrived, while well, he was absolutely shocked at what he found, because he was unable to contact the owner of the land, he wasn't able to fully inspect the cave. The reason the cave was so interesting was because of the fact that he could tell it wasn't created by some sort of geological process. Finally, in 2015, he was able to return to the cave for study, and this is when it was realized that this was the first paleo burrow ever discovered in the Amazon. Seeing the strange features of the cave as well as what looked like claw marks on the ceiling, it became clear that this cave was created by generations of some sort of gigantic ancient burrowing creature. It is believed that the animal responsible for these caves is an extinct species of ground sloth that grew to be 15 feet tall and was 5,000 pounds. It's an incredible discovery that unveiled even more than what might have met the eye. In our Number 6 spot today, we have Machu Picchu. Perhaps one of the most famous archaeological discoveries in South America, this incredible and stunning site was built over 500 years ago, and it was once known as the Lost City of the Inca. Our modern discovery of this site came in 1911, when the archaeologist Hiram Bingham and his team stumbled upon it, almost accidentally while looking for another ancient city. The stones used to create this site weighed over 50 tons, and it certainly doesn't have a location that would have been convenient to 
to its construction. Through earthquakes and all of the terrible weather that the Earth has seen in the last 500 some years, Machu Picchu remains and that is a testament to how brilliant their work really was. In our number 5 spot today we have the Inca mummies. In 1976 researchers found two mummies at a burial site in northern Chile. These two corpses belonged to two young women who were the victims of human ritual sacrifice. It is likely that the sacrifice they were a part of was one that was carried out by the Inca to commemorate either historical or political events or as a response to a natural disaster. The mummies were found wearing silver ornaments and they were surrounded by ceramic vessels and they were wearing red robes. The red in the Inca clothing was often created using hematite or other iron oxides, but upon further inspection of these mummies, it was revealed that their red clothing held something much more dangerous. The dye used for their clothing contained cinnabar, which is a mineral rich in mercury. This was often used in the ancient world as a pigment for makeup, clothing, and paint, but handling it leads to mercury poisoning. What is strange is that researchers believe that the toxicity of cinnabar was known in ancient Peru, so we aren't exactly sure why they used it in the first place, but it's thought that it might have been used as protection against grave robbers. In our number 4 spot today we have Puma Puncu. This site is located in Bolivia and it boasts a series of stone structures. One of the most notable and remarkable things about this site is how precisely the stones here were cut. It is believed that this site dates back to somewhere around 536 AD and while it now lay in ruins, it is thought to have once been an incredibly wondrous place filled with things like polished metal plaques, bright ceramics, and a bunch of different fabrics. It isn't quite known exactly what this site was used for entirely, partly because of its age, but also because of the lack of written record and the deterioration that can be seen at the site. Because of the impressive size of the site, as well as the technology that was used to build it, this is a place that many people often say was built by aliens, but it was actually just the Incas. They were incredibly talented craftsmen, and just because we couldn't pull it off today doesn't mean we should take their credit away. In our number 3 spot today we have Whale Hill. In 2010, in the Atacama Desert in Chile, some road work was being done when the fossils and bones of 40 whales were found among the remains of other marine animals. Remember, this is in the desert and about 40 meters above sea level, so how is this even possible? I feel like I could totally understand like maybe a few fish, but 40 whales, some dolphins, seals, and swordfish? Something strange certainly must have been at play. Like I'm sure many of you are thinking, maybe the remains were from a time when the sea was once there, but unfortunately that too has been debunked. It isn't exactly clear what happened here, but the belief is that these animals may have consumed some kind of toxic plant or algae and somehow ended up washing ashore only to pass away in this location. In our number 2 spot today we have Saxe Huaman. This site is located in Cusco, Peru and it is another fascinating and seemingly impossible stone structure that was built by the Incas. This structure was once believed to have been a fortress, but now it is believed it may have actually been used for things like ceremonies. Why this is another incredible creation is because of the fact that we can't quite figure out how it could have been built. The stones in the structure fit together so perfectly that they are able to stay together without anything holding them in place, and they've done so for years and years. This coupled with how large some of the stones were is enough to completely stump experts. Despite how well the stones all fit together, apparently they all have different shapes, which has led researchers to believe that the building design was kind of made up as the structure was being built. Imagine that, improvising building a structure and it lasts for hundreds of years and goes on to stump humanity for a while. I'm just saying, this is pretty cool. It becomes more and more apparent how talented and brilliant the Inca really were. In our number one spot today we have the sacrificial offerings. In 2018, researchers sent some remote operated robots beneath the ground in Peru at an archaeological site. These robots stumbled on more than anyone ever imagined when they found a network of 35 interlocked underground tunnels dating back 3,000 years. This this was already an unbelievable discovery, but it turned dark when inside these tunnels, the team found a bunch of human remains. While finding a mass amount of remains would be a terrifying experience, there were three skeletons that stood out from the rest. They specifically stood out because they weren't like the others. They weren't the skeletons of people who had a high social standing, which almost all of the others appeared to be. These remains they found were from people who were sacrificed in rituals. They were able to determine this because of the fact that these bodies were found face down under piles of rocks, which is of course not how people of a high social standing would have been buried at this time. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the vanishing remains. It's been over 30 years since the Titanic wreck was found, and recently scientists have made another startling discovery. As it turns out, the remains of the 
wreckage don't have much time left. As we speak, they are currently vanishing. The ocean liner, which is over 100 years old, has not only been beaten by the currents of the deep sea, but the main culprit for its deterioration is an iron-hungry bacteria that consumes hundreds of pounds of iron a day. This bacteria, which has been named Halomonas titanicae, is likely going to render the ship completely eroded by 2030. This means that researchers who want to discover more about the Titanic really are racing against time to get down there and see all that they can before the remains are gone, and the story of the Titanic remains just that. In our number 9 spot today, we have portholes. Since the Titanic sunk, people have been trying to figure out exactly how this unsinkable ship sank and how it sank so quickly. A recent study may have found a previously undiscussed scenario that likely contributed to the speed of the sinking ship greatly. On that fateful day, of course, the Titanic grinded to a halt, and at that point, the passengers had no idea why. This led to many of them opening up the portholes in the ship to get a look out in case they could see anything that would be stopping them from from continuing on their journey. Many of those who opened the portholes didn't close them after, and with every open porthole that went underwater, it is estimated that it doubled the size of the damage to the ship. It is possible that these open windows may have caused the ship to sink at double the rate it would have had those windows been closed. Of course, this is not to blame the passengers, however, as this tragedy is certainly not their fault. In our number 8 spot today, we have the brittle fracture. This is another one of those theories behind how the Titanic found itself at the bottom of the North Atlantic. There was an expedition down to the wreckage of the Titanic recently, and it revealed something interesting about the hull of the ship. There were these large pieces of steel that were recovered, each with about three rivet holes 1.25 inches in diameter. These pieces revealed that the hull's iron rivets failed to brittle fracture, which is the sudden and rapid snapping. This means that there was a failure in the structural materials, and this usually happens as a result of low temperature, high impact loading, and high sulfur content all three of which were present on the night of the tragedy. The water temperature was below freezing, the Titanic was traveling at a high speed upon impact with the iceberg, and the hull steel contained high levels of sulfur. These chunks of metal gave researchers one of the main answers as to why the Titanic sunk that night. In our number 7 spot today, we have rich remains. When we think of the story of the Titanic, we of course think of the sinking of the ship, we talk about how the survivors were saved, and then of course we think of the catastrophic loss of life. Many people don't stop to ask what happened with all of those who passed away in the tragedy, however. More than 1,500 people passed away in the sinking of the Titanic, and only 337 bodies were pulled from the water. A scholar named Jess Beer has recently examined what was done with those bodies, and throughout this research, Research, they have come to realize that whether or not these people got identified and what happened to the remains in the end all depended on their class and economic standing in life. About one third of the recovered bodies ended up being returned to the sea because rescuers didn't think that they would get any sort of life insurance payout from the families of those who had passed and who were of a lower economic standing. For any bodies to be preserved for land burial, the remains had to be easily identifiable and they needed to have a quote, economic value even after death death with a high social or economic worth. In our number 6 spot today, we have the unidentified passenger. Until about 10 years ago, there were human remains that were recovered from the Titanic sinking that were unidentified despite researchers' best efforts. Initially, there was one identity that they thought they could link the body to, but there were also five other identities on the table, and no one was sure how to confirm who this person really was. A little over a decade ago, however, using mitochondrial DNA testing, the re-examining of the DNA gave a 98 8.87% certainty the unknown person was in fact a passenger named Sidney Goodwin. A man named Ryan Parr is heavily credited with helping bring this mystery to a close, although he insists it couldn't have been done without the help of numerous researchers and scientists who also worked to reveal this passenger's true identity. In our number 5 spot today, we have family ties. Lorraine Allison was just 2 years old when she boarded the Titanic with her family, her parents, and her brother. At the time of the sinking, it is said that Lorraine's brother was rushed to a lifeboat, but that the other three members of the family had passed in the tragedy. Despite this, only Lorraine's father's body was found, which led to the question of what happened to Lorraine and her mother. 28 years later, a woman named Helen Kramer came forward and said that she, in fact, was the missing Lorraine. Of course, people were skeptical and weren't willing to believe this, but until her death in 1992, Helen continued to claim that she was, in fact, Lorraine. After her passing, her granddaughter, Debrina Woods, resurfaced the claims 
by saying that she had inherited more evidence from her grandmother and that the truth should be told. Finally, a group of Titanic researchers with the power of modern science decided that they all wanted to solve this mystery once and for all. They did this by convincing descendants from each family to take a DNA test and once this was done, they were able to prove that there was no relationship between the two. They were finally able to put this long disputed claim to rest officially. In our number four spot today, we have the telegraph. So you know how people often explain that perhaps many more people would have been saved from the Titanic wreck if the nearby SS Californian had their telegraph operator awake when the distress call was sent? For the man who went to sleep, that's a heavy burden to bear for the rest of your life. But a recent study suggests that even if he was awake, there likely wouldn't have been anything that he could have done. Firstly, there wasn't any rule stating that this guy needed to be awake for 24 hours to man the telegraph machine. So right here, he is off the hook. This study, however, suggests that even if he was awake and the ship received the distress call, the ice around the Titanic was so thick they likely wouldn't have been able to get through to save the passengers either way. Turns out that this disaster really just had the perfect recipe for tragedy. In our number three spot today, we have the Titanic radio. This is a piece of the ship that has not yet been recovered, but it's the focus of much debate on whether or not it should be retrieved from the wreckage. Known in 1912 as the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Machine, the radio on the Titanic sent distress calls to nearby ships that ended up saving the lives of 700 people in lifeboats. Despite how many people died in the Titanic tragedy, there were debates about whether or not to retrieve the artifact fact because of the fact that there might still be remains located in the same area as the radio is. Lawyers have argued against the recovery of the radio because the dive plan did not include the prospect of there being human remains located down there. It also was argued because in order to retrieve it, they would need to cut into the ship's radio compartment, which was strongly opposed by preservation advocates. As of right now, it does appear as though the dive to retrieve the radio will still occur, but of course the pandemic delayed things quite a bit, so at this point it is isn't exactly clear when. This radio would be a very valuable artifact, but it also would hold an eerie tale of exactly when and how the radio was used during the final moments of the Titanic. In our number two spot today, we have the inspection card. This inspection card once belonged to a woman named Marion Meanwell. What could possibly be worrisome about an inspection card? Well, it shows how Marion was not intended to be on the Titanic, but by some turn of events, she unfortunately found herself as one of the passengers. The card shows that she was originally meant to be traveling on a ship called the Majestic. For some reason, the trip she originally had planned was delayed, and she instead was assigned to the ill-fated Titanic. You can see that the word Majestic was crossed out on her card, which shows us the change in plans. If only people were able to see what was about to strike, and they could have warned her. If Marianne's body was ever recovered, unfortunately, she has never been identified. In our number one spot today, we have the bell. The bell from the crow's nest of the Titanic was recovered from the wreckage and returned to land where it now resides in the Titanic Museum. The eerie story behind this bell is that it would have been the one that was rung three times by the lookout Frederick Fleet in order to attempt to warn of the iceberg that was ahead. Frederick, as well as the other lookout who was with him, Reginald Lee, both ended up thankfully surviving the incident and went on to later explain what happened from their point of view. They explained that if they had been given binoculars to assist with their job, they could have seen the iceberg sooner. When asked how much sooner, Frederick replied, quote, well, enough to get out of the way. At number 10, we have an octopus nursery. Eight-legged alien-looking things with suction cups all over their arms and beaks for mouths. Octopus are creepy-looking things, and to top it all off, they can camouflage like a Navy SEAL, and they are super smart. If these are the kind of things that make your skin crawl, then just running into one of these guys would probably freak you out. Well, on the underwater expedition at the Davidson Seamount, there was a rather shocking discovery. They had a remote probe that was on the ocean floor around 10,000 feet, and they came across which seemed to be an octopus that was next to not just one, not just two, but a group of 1,000 octopuses in a nursery. They were all there laying their eggs and using the heat from the volcanic vent to keep them warm. I would hate to be the guy who accidentally steps into that crack and then gets devoured.
powered by thousands of sticky arms. But if you're at 10,000 feet underwater, you probably are already screwed. At number nine, we have the Siberian Lake Monster. Of course, if we're doing a list of scary things that live underwater, we have to throw a giant mysterious sea monster on here. What separates the Siberian Lake Monster from other more popular guys that we have seen like Loch Ness and that kind of stuff is that underwater scans have actually picked this guy up. This thing is deep in Lake Lavinkure and some radar has shown that it looks like a 33 foot long creature is living there. Now this is probably just a skeleton, but if this thing is dead, it means that there was once a giant man eating monster in this lake. I thought we were supposed to be safe in fresh water. They've nicknamed this thing the devil, so you know he's a good time and loves company. So next time you go up to the cottage and you're swimming in the water and you feel safe, remember there might be a giant monster lurking underneath the water ready to turn you into a side dish. At number eight, we have the blue hole. Now there are several blue holes in the world. There's one in Belize, there's one in the Red Sea, there's a giant one in my heart that was left there from when Reboot ended on a cliffhanger. How are you going to end a show that so many people fell in love with on a cliffhanger? I will never trust again. Well this one is between Cape Verde and the Caribbean islands. Scientists are really confused about this thing. It's a crack in the bottom of the ocean floor and it's several thousand miles long. What's strange about this is there's no explanation of how this happened. It might have been tectonic plates moving around, but when this happened the earth will probably start to repair itself and there's been no sign of this. My theory is this is where Godzilla goes to sleep at night. I mean it seems like the most logical answer. It's either that or the gateway to hell. Like come on guys, I'm doing real science work here. At number seven we have the Yanaguni complex. This was discovered by scuba divers in the 1980s. I think that's the scariest part about this one. Could you imagine going scuba diving back in the 80s? The technology back then must have been a tube going up to some guy who would blast fresh air down to you using a bicycle pump. I don't even think they had decompression sickness figured out back then. The chances of you coming up the bends was probably super high. Well if it wasn't for a few divers in Japan who were willing to sacrifice it all to look at some cool stuff, we wouldn't know anything about the Yanaguni complex. It's still a mystery as to what this thing is. It looks like some temples that might have existed thousands of years ago, but when the ice age decided to melt, it would have covered this entire area. This could be why an entire civilization got plunged underwater. Or the temple could have been on a cliff, and then when a massive earthquake hit, it knocked the temple into the water. But like everything in life, there are some haters who say this whole thing is just a natural rock formation. Some people just want to ruin everything. At number six, we have Anacora Sista Twista. One of the reasons why the underwater world is such a mystery is because we find things like this in there. Sure, there are beautiful things down there like bright fish and chubby marine mammals, but there's also the unknown, unidentified organisms like Anacora Sista Twista, which should be the name of an 80s hair metal band. But what is this thing? Well, it's a protist. And what is a protist, you may ask? Well, it's an organism that doesn't belong to any animal group, fungus, or plant group. What does that mean? I really have no idea, you guys. I think it means it could be an alien. Some alien came down to Earth for a swim and then scraped its knee on some coral, and now we have alien creatures running around the ocean, probably waiting for you to pee so it can swim up your pee hole and then work its way into your brain. It's really the only logical answer. At number five, we have the Bimini Road. How were the pyramids made? Was it aliens coming down to share their technology and secrets with us or was it just thousands upon thousands of slaves who sacrificed their lives and their spines to build them? Well we don't know and we may never know but the Bimini Road is another one of these mysteries. It's off the coast of the Bahamas and it looks like it could have been a pathway that was placed perfectly with giant slabs of rock. Similar to the way the pyramids were made, it seems that these large slabs of rock were too large to be moved by man and also like the pyramids, these giant slabs were also perfectly placed so well. So where does everyone's mind go when something like this happens? Well, magic or aliens. The logical answer is that this is a natural phenomenon of the water moving and hitting the rocks to make these formations. But people think that this was made using advanced technology from aliens and could have been the road to Atlantis. Honestly, I like the Atlantis theory much better. It's more fun. At number four, we have Colossal Squid. Yeah, this thing is a big no thanks for me. So everyone always talks about how there might be sea monsters out there. But this thing 
actually exist. There's never been one caught alive, but several have washed onto shores dead. And they are massive. The largest one ever discovered was 45 feet long and it was dead. So you know there was an even bigger one out there that killed this guy. They don't even have suckers on their tentacles, they have hooks. Let me say that again. This squid has 10 giant arms covered in hooks. This thing is straight out of a horror movie. Scientists aren't even sure what something this big eats. They think it probably feeds on whales or your deepest darkest fears. I wouldn't be surprised if the colossal squid works part time as a gatekeeper for hell. It makes me think that the old Greek stories about the kraken might have been real. At number 3 we have underwater circles. Giant formations of circles that are formed underwater and nobody knows how they got there. These mysteries were discovered off the coast of North Carolina, Florida and Belize. Now what are they? Like many things on this list, myself and the entire scientific community have no idea. But here are some theories. Maybe they were formed naturally by either two things, water currents or some sort of animal mating ritual. Another idea is that these things were made by ancient civilizations before the ice age. All these things would have been above ground and might have been art left over by some old timey tribes. And the third theory is that they look kind of like a bullseye so it might be some sort of nuclear missile target and if you hit it hard enough the explosion will cause some sort of major natural disaster like an earthquake or tsunami or if we're lucky, both. At number 2 we have Megalodon. Megalodon. If you have a fear of sharks you're gonna love this one. Megalodon was a prehistoric shark that was even bigger than the giant hook tentacle beast that was earlier on this list. If you've already forgotten about the colossal squid it clocked in at around 45 feet long where Megalodon was closer to 60 feet long. It was a 60 foot shark that could probably rip a blue whale in half in one bite. Well maybe not that but it was still a gargantuan creature with teeth the size of Brock Lesnar's fists. This thing wouldn't even chew you. It would just swallow you whole and then fart your skeleton out into the dark cold ocean. At number 1 on our list we have giant eyeball. A mysterious giant eyeball washed onto the shore of a Florida beach back in October of 2012. I don't know any other kind of giant eyeball other than a mysterious one. There's no super common regular giant eyeball just lying around. But this is also Florida. This is the state where people smoke crack at weddings and kiss alligators on the lips. So maybe it's a little more common over there. Well this giant eyeball was found by Gino Cavacci and he didn't know what the hell to make of it so he took it home and then stuck it in his freezer. Then he called the cops and the cops came in and told him we don't do giant eyeballs on the beach. You have to call the wildlife people. And then he called the wildlife people and they were like what the hell is that? And he was like I don't know I brought it to you guys to try and figure out what it is. And then some people were like maybe it's a sea monster and other people were like no it's probably from a marlin. And I think in the end no no one really knew what the hell it was. But just so you know, there's giant eyeballs out there just laying around the beach sometime. Number 10, Haunted Takeaway. This story comes from a cafe in Hong Kong that did a lot of delivery orders to customers homes. One day they received an order for 4 meals and they brought it to the address they were given. The customer only opened the door a crack, sliding the money through and telling them to leave the food on the floor. When they checked the register that night, they discovered the money they were given had turned into hell money which locals used to burn for use in the afterlife. This happened a few more days in a row, every time going to the same home and the money turning into hell money. Each time the customer would never fully open the door or reveal themselves. Finally the owner decided to report it to the police and when they entered the apartment they discovered that the residents weren't actually alive, instead finding 4 dead bodies on the floor. They were able to tell that the bodies had been dead for a significant amount of time, but still had food in their stomachs from the cafe that was only recently digested. Number 9, Sea Monster. In 2018, tourists on a beach in Vietnam were shocked by an apparent sea monster that had washed up on shore, one person filming it and uploading it to YouTube for more people to see. The creature is incredibly strange looking and to me it looks like a bundle of like alien twigs or something. The tour guide themselves admitted that they had no idea if it was an animal, a plant or even something alien. A lot of commenters believed that this was some sort of mysterious alien creature found on earth as no one had ever seen anything like it before. Many people speculating that it might be only in its early stages of development and could grow into something bigger and scarier. As it turns out, it's apparently just some sort of scary deep sea starfish and they ended up returning it to the water. And I will honestly never get over how terrifying and alien looking some deep sea creatures are. Number 8, Seven Sisters Rock. 
This one is another one that comes from Hong Kong and it's the story behind the Seven Sisters Road. The story goes that there was a group of seven women who lived near the area and together they took a vow of celibacy, which means never getting married or ever being physically intimate with someone. Through their pact, they became blood sisters. However, the third sister's family refused to go along with this and organized for her to be married off, preparing the ceremony. Because of their pact, the night before the wedding ceremony took place, all seven women drowned themselves in the river. The villagers in the area were never able to find their bodies, but the next time the tide receded, they discovered seven large boulders all in a row. As a result, they were named the Seven Sisters Rocks. Years later, a swimming space was built called the Seven Sisters Swimming Shed, but any late night male swimmers there would end up drowning mysteriously, the Seven Sisters reportedly haunting the space. Number 7. Haunted Tomb before I start this one, I am just going to say yes, Israel is in Asia, and yes, I did have to Google that. Go easy on me. It's been a while since I last took a geography class. A group of researchers were doing excavations in an old cemetery in Israel when they discovered an ancient tomb. What shocked them the most, however, was the grave marker for a man named Jacob the Convert, who died around 1800 years ago. The inscription on the grave was written in human blood, and was a warning that nobody should ever open the tomb, stating that anyone who does so would be cursed. What type of curse isn't detailed, but curses are typically never a good thing. The people who found it walled off the area with stones and halted their excavations. Getting cursed probably wasn't in their contract. Number 6. Cursed Balls More cursed things from Israel, let's take a look at this pair of cursed balls. And yes, I did pick this one because I think it's funny to say cursed balls. During excavation near the Israel border, archaeologists discovered these two ballista balls, which were basically ammunition for a big crossbow that fires rocks. A few years later, the balls went missing from the site, but unfortunately, nobody actually noticed. Twenty years later, the balls were returned and found on the site once again, along with a note. The thief who stole them apparently had bad luck and believed that the balls were cursed. He said that when he brought the balls home, his successful business suddenly failed, his family abandoned him, he went into severe debt, and apparently many other issues. He didn't realize until it was too late that his bad luck was caused by a bunch of bad balls. So he returned the balls to the site and we can only assume that his bad luck ended. Number 5. Ganjiam Asylum now let's swerve into a few buildings that were discovered to be apparently haunted. The first is Ganjiam Psychiatric Hospital in South Korea, touted as the most haunted place in the country. It was opened in 1982 but closed only 14 years later in 1996, being left empty and abandoned. The story goes that many of the patients at the hospital were disappearing mysteriously, people believing that the owner of the hospital was actually keeping them hostage there and treating them poorly, running away to America when the families and authorities started looking into it. The doctors there apparently became just as insane as the patients, and due to their tragic deaths and unfinished business, the angry spirits of the doctors and patients now haunt the broken down facility. Many urban explorers and ghost hunters report large amounts of paranormal activity and seeing apparitions of the patients within the halls. Number 4. Prince Gong's Mansion Over in China, China, one of their most haunted locations is Prince Gong's mansion, owned by an official of the Qing dynasty who was known to be incredibly corrupt. He lived there with his wife and his harem of around 80 ladies. One of his only redeeming factors was said to be his devotion to his wife. When she became incredibly sick after their son passed away, he did everything to try and figure out a way to cure her, including hiring monks to pray for her health. Unfortunately, they apparently discovered that she was dying of a broken heart, and this was unable to be cured by any method. So unfortunately, the woman would soon pass away. The mansion is now said to be haunted by her spirit as well as other women that the prince was involved with. Most of the reports say that you can hear his wife crying late at night, and security guards have reported seeing apparitions of women in white dresses wandering through the halls. Number 3. Soccer Team 
This one was probably one of the most talked about news stories at the time, even worldwide, and you'll probably remember it once I start talking about it. Back in 2018, a group of British divers were in northern Thailand when they discovered an entire soccer team flooded and trapped over two miles inside of a cave. The soccer team had been led to the cave by their coach who had visited there before. It was supposed to be only a quick expedition lasting around two hours, so they brought only flashlights, rope, and batteries, not any food or water. But when a monsoon hit, they became trapped inside and two hours turned into two weeks, surviving off water dripping from a stalactite and chanting mantras in order to stay calm. Fortunately, all 12 players were rescued over the course of three days and survived, only one rescue team member losing their life in the effort. Number 2. Airplane Graveyard One place to visit in Thailand that many people probably don't know about is this airplane graveyard. Starting in January of 2010, large scrapped airplanes just suddenly started showing up on a chunk of private property next to an auto body shop in Bangkok. In five years, many large planes were added to the graveyard and soon after, it was discovered that three separate families had taken up residence within the planes. The planes are clearly broken down and have been stripped for their parts, making the site look like the eerie location of like a giant multiple plane plane crash. The families that live there use the planes as a source of income, taking the parts to be sold and making money off tourists who come to visit. Some of the planes include two Boeing 747s and two MD-82 jetliners. Gaining access to the property will run you around $5, so if you're in Thailand and interested in planes, maybe consider checking it out. Number 1. Hybrid Creature and we are continuing to stay in Thailand for this final entry on the list, which is a strange creature found in a remote village that had people absolutely baffled. Footage of the creature shows it laid out on a table surrounded by people. It appears to be a young buffalo, but it has the skin and scales of a crocodile, many people believing that a crocodile and buffalo somehow fell in love and created this hybrid creature which died shortly after it was born, which is a pretty common occurrence for hybrid animals. Animals. The buffalo had previously birthed plenty of normal calves before, so they didn't think it could have been just some passed down genetic trait, truly believing it must be mixed with a crocodile. The villagers had it laid out on the table because they believed that the creature would bring them good luck. Whether or not it actually did, I'm not sure, and other people online believe that the whole thing was just a hoax. Starting off this countdown, we have David Fravor. David Fravor is a US Navy commander who spoke about some pretty terrifying things that he encountered underwater while working for the Navy. So according to him, twice while recovering spent practice munitions out of the water, he spotted a weird underwater object. The first time, he saw a dark mass underwater. He described it as being a big mass that was kind of circular. He said he was certain that it wasn't a submarine. For the second sighting, he was retrieving a practice torpedo when this same weird thing sucked it down into the depths of the ocean. The torpedo was never seen again. So what was this big mass that he was seeing? In our ninth spot, we have the naval report. After hearing David's interview, a 79-year-old woman contacted him. She said that her father was a naval officer, and when she was a child, her father showed her a telegram that stated that unidentified objects had been sighted going in and out of the water at one of their locations. The woman's father told her, and I quote, We get these all the time, and it's always in the same area. But obviously, the Navy isn't going to release this information to the public. In our 8th spot today, we have the Sycamore Knoll. This is a weird underwater structure located close to Malibu. No one knows what it is, but it looks like a weird stadium shaped structure and it's located about 2,000 feet underwater. It's also massive. It's about 2.5 to 3 miles wide. It also has what appears to be pillars or columns supporting it up. And under there, it looks like an entrance. One theory is that it's an underwater alien base. Crazy, I know. But a number of UFO sightings have been reported for years in that area. Some even claim to see UFOs landing in the waters in that exact area.
area, and this was before the underwater structure was even discovered. Freaky, isn't it? What do you think it is though? Let me know in the comments below. In our seventh spot today, we have the unidentified object. Now, in case you were unaware, there's this whole theory that aliens live in underwater bases, and that's why a number of UFO sightings are by lakes, or people have seen these saucers rise up or into the lakes. Well, in 1970, biologist Ivan Sanderson published a book titled The Invisible Residence. In this book, he talked all about UFOs or USOs, unidentified submerged objects, aka UFOs that have been spotted going into the water or rising up out of it. According to this book, on April 19th, 1957, a crew member on board a Japanese fishing boat witnessed something very strange. He saw two metallic silvery objects descend from the sky and dive right down into the sea. He described them as being 10 meters long with no wings or anything. When the craft hit the water, it caused great waves and rocked their boat tremendously. So maybe the whole UFO, USO theory is true and they're living underwater. Who knows? In our sixth spot today, we have the gold. Did you know that $771 trillion worth of gold lies hidden in the ocean? Yes. You heard me. Wouldn't it be nice to just be swimming along and bump into some gold and become a millionaire? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Ocean waters around the world contain about 20 million tons of gold in them. Each liter of water would contain approximately 13 billionths of a gram of gold. So you need to collect and filter an awful lot before becoming rich. And currently, there's no cost effective method to remove the gold from seawater and be profitable. Now, people have tried not have been successful. One case that I want to talk about has to do with a man named Ford Jerrigan. He came up with a plan for a gold accumulator. The plan was to extract gold from the Long Island Sound using a process involving mercury and electricity treatments. In fact, people thought that it was great, and before he knew it, he had investors, and he raised about $1 million for this project. But in the end, he scammed them all and fled with the money. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the giant sea monster. Now, if you watch my video on Google Earth, then you already have seen me talk about this. If you haven't, then, well, Google Earth basically caught a giant sea beast on their satellite camera. It was spotted off the coast of Antarctica's Deception Island. And no one, even scientists, don't know what it is. It could just be a whale, but it's still unconfirmed. Theories range from it being an underwater UFO to a kraken or another sea beast that we have yet to discover. To be honest, to me, it looks like a massive squid, but what do you think it is? Let me know in the comments below. In our fourth spot, we have the UFO video. More UFOs. Now, this was a leaked video showing what appears to be a UFO diving into the ocean. The video was filmed in 2019 off the coast of San Diego. Eventually, people were demanding answers, so the Pentagon eventually came forward saying that the video was authentic and that they don't know what the object is in the video. In the video, the object flies across the screen before stopping and slowly lowering itself into the water. Apparently, this was recorded by official Navy personnel. What do you think that could be? The Pentagon has no explanation for it yet. In our third spot today, we have the plastic. The amount of plastic currently in our oceans is disgusting. Currently, 5.25 trillion macro and micro pieces of plastic are in our ocean. There's 46,000 pieces in every square mile of the ocean. Every day, around 8 million pieces of plastic make their way into our oceans. And guess what? Fish are eating them, and then we're eating these fish. So slowly, these microplastics are ending up in our bodies. But not just from fish. From bottled water, beer, honey, sea salt, and tea bags have all been exposed as microplastic carriers. We're killing marine life and ourselves, slowly but surely, and the governments are hardly addressing this issue. In our second spot, we have the nuclear waste. Now you didn't know this, but our oceans are radioactive. Since 1952, low levels of radioactive waste have been discharged into the Irish Sea, the English Channel, and the Arctic Ocean. This radiation can enter the food chain through plankton, and then the fish eat the plankton and then we eat the fish. In fact, radioactive cesium and plutonium have already been found in seals and purposes. And it's getting worse. As the nuclear energy industry grows, more and more radioactive waste will be disposed of and find its way into our ground and water supply. Again, another scary thing the government doesn't address. And in our number one spot today, we have the secret underwater bases. Allegedly, the government has a number of secret underwater bases. They're just hidden from the public, so we don't know about them. We 
We do know of one base though, and that's the Naval Testing Facility in Lake Bayview, Idaho. The lake that it's located in is 1,200 feet deep, and it is pretty remote, so it's deep and secluded enough to run these tests. If they have one there, who's to say they don't have more and in the ocean? Only time will tell. Number 10, abandoned car. A desert park ranger on Reddit shared a few of their stories that they had experienced while working. One that stands out is their discovery of a burned and abandoned car. When they received the report, they weren't too shocked, as it wasn't a rare occurrence that cars would be stolen and abandoned, occasionally being burned. When they found the vehicle, and as they waited for the fire department to arrive, they were left standing in shock, as it was clear that there was a body left in the front seat of the car. They discovered rope and other strange items in the car, and it was determined that the body had been tied up and killed. The police arrived, but no answers ever came about what had happened there, and they now refer to the area as the haunted site. Number 9. Abandoned Sites It's not uncommon to find abandoned campsites in the woods, but these rangers share their stories of the unique, strange, and scary things they found that made them stand out. The first was an abandoned house, with a small shed hidden behind it. The shed had a large steel door, which had been broken off its hinges when they found it. The windows had been boarded over and covered up, but venturing inside, they found only a queen-sized bed covered with burned sheets. The next was an abandoned tent found very close to the walking trail. Inside was a large stash of food like beans and rice, a sleeping bag, and a lonely teddy bear. Sometimes the stories with the least information and answers are scariest, as they allow our minds to wander and imagine various frightening scenarios. Number 8. Search Returns Strange Evidence A ranger and their co-worker were called to head out and search for a group of teen hikers that had become separated from their group. They spent most of their day heading in the direction of where the teenagers had last been seen. Eventually, deep into the woods and their journey, they came across a startling discovery. They found branches which had been carved into spears placed into the ground, unidentifiable carvings in trees, children's stuffed toys hanging from ropes tied to the trees. One thing they noticed was that the symbols in the trees appeared to be freshly carved. As would be expected, the two were spooked, but settled down nearby as night was coming and they had to sleep. In the morning, they discovered shoe prints and a piece of fabric that had become caught on a tree. Someone had been there in the night. The teens were later discovered and the two workers returned back to base, never knowing who had been in the woods with them that night. Number seven, strange creature. A camp counselor in New York made a scary discovery when he was sneaking out late at night to meet up with his girlfriend. It was about 1 a.m. when he heard rustling in the woods next to him, expecting to be faced with something like a bear, deer, or other wild animal. Unexpectedly, a creature burst forth from the bushes towards him. In the darkness, he described the creature's appearance as being three feet tall, standing on two legs, and having two arms, looking like a miniature person. While it can be easy to misidentify animals in the dark of night, I personally can't think of any normal forest creature that would match anything close to this description. He then moved towards it and it apparently got scared, running away in a strange manner that the camp counselor described as being similar to doing the robot dance. To this day, he has no idea what the creature might have been. Number 6. Light on the Cliff An unfortunate part of being a park ranger is having to go on search and rescue missions for missing people, and never knowing what state you might find them in, if at all. One park ranger recounts a story of him and his co-worker on one of these calls, searching for a man in his 20s who had gone missing. As they spent the day searching with no luck, they decided to set up a camp and rest for the night. At about 2 a.m., he got up to go to the bathroom, when he spotted a bright light moving on a cliff a few miles away, saying it looked to be like a flashlight beam. In the morning, they went to search that area, and unfortunately found the missing man's body at the base of the cliff. What caught the ranger's attention was a flashlight, similar to the one he thought he had seen on the cliff. So it seems to make sense. The man had been walking with his flashlight and had unfortunately fallen. But it doesn't end there. When the coroner arrived to inspect the body, it was determined the man had clearly been dead for over 48 hours. So how could it have been him shining his flashlight on the cliff the night before? 
Apparently, another search and rescue team member had been near the area and hadn't seen any other people. To this day, there seems to be no explanation for what that light was. Number five, burned mannequins. Another park ranger on Reddit shared his experience while working at a national wildlife refuge that had formerly been home to a US Army lab site. The site had been completely transformed to become a wildlife refuge, with years of thorough cleanup needing to be done on things like barbed wire fences and barricades before it could be opened. One night, when the ranger was walking deep into the forest, he saw figures in the distance. This caught him off guard, as you're not permitted to leave the trails at all. So who was out there? The ranger announced himself and moved closer, and what he discovered was six mannequins in military uniforms, which appeared to have been badly burnt. Six burned figures standing around in the woods in the dark of night would have been scary for anyone to stumble upon, though apparently he chalked it up to having been part of a fabric test. Still pretty scary to discover though, and to think it was somehow missed in the decade-long cleanup of the park. Number four, only resident. A park ranger for a small island was the only year-round resident of the area. The island had no bridges or ferries and could only be accessed by private boats. The island would be crowded in the summer, but in the off-season, the island was only inhabited by the ranger. Walking at night, he was adventuring around the island, seeing if he could hike the entire distance. He saw a flash of white in the distance, thinking it was a herd of the brown and white deer which were local to the area. He pressed forward, before hearing something move again. Suddenly, out of the woods came a six-foot tall man, wearing a bright white shirt. He sprinted straight up to the ranger with a strange grin on his face, before shouting and laughing loudly, quickly sprinting back into the woods again. The ranger was rightfully terrified, because as far as he knew, he was the only person on the small island. For the next few days, he tried to find any evidence of another person living on the island, but never found any campsite, boat, or other signs of life. Number three, mysterious stranger. A ranger was leading a hiking trip to the top of a mountain in North Carolina, a difficult hike far from any civilization. When they reached the peak, they set up a camp on a beautiful clear night. Since it was so nice out, after the group had gone to bed in their tents, the ranger chose to sleep outside in a hammock, reading a book to pass the time. Due to the brightness of the camp and the moon, it was easy for them to see around the camp and the trail that they had taken to get there. They were soon caught off guard by the sight of something moving, expecting it to be a bear. But as they got closer, they realized it was the shape of a person. They found it odd to see someone at the top of the difficult and long trail at night with no light or any sign of gear. They watched the person move closer towards the camp before the figure stopped, staring out at the camp. The figure stood there for a while before moving to sit under a tree, still staring intently. The ranger watched the man sit there for what was apparently a few hours before the figure got up and made his way back down to the trail. This left the poor ranger with a paranoid feeling of being followed for the remainder of the trip. Number two, deer head. It's not uncommon to find animals or animal remains in the woods, circle of life and all that, but a Yellowstone ranger described their very bizarre experience which occurred near a valley deep into the park. While walking a trail, they found in the middle of the path the head of a deer. What was strange was that the head was perfectly clean, no sign of blood and no sign of an animal having tried to eat it. The ranger didn't find any other signs of other animals that may have been around the area and done this. They also had no explanation for why a human may have done this, as it was a doe with no antlers that a hunter may want to collect. The experience left the ranger shaking and desperately trying to come up with an explanation for the bizarre and shocking discovery, but none could be found. Number one, skin changer. One wildland firefighter shares a story that his supervisor had told him many times. Apparently in Idaho, the crew had been working on a large fire incident and would have to be there through the night in order to deal with it. The supervisor went out on an ATV to get a look at the nearby area when a large cat, seemingly a bobcat, ran out into the road. The animal stood there and stared at him for a while before letting out a loud scream and running up a tree nearby the road. While startling, it didn't appear to be any reason for concern. Further down the road, he discovered an abandoned cabin. This was also strange as the land was federal property and there should be no buildings. The house appeared derelict and was boarded up, everything inside appearing incredibly out of order. 
Unsettled, the supervisor got back on his ATV to head back, but at the exact same place where he had seen the bobcat, a woman stood in the road with a nightgown and bare feet. He asked if she needed help, to which she responded with a scream, before running up the same tree the bobcat had, faster than any human would be able to. After returning, he asked locals about the cabin in the area, recounting his experience, to which they told him that he had likely had an encounter with a skin changer. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have tracks. Okay, so the last thing we want when talking about a huge sinkhole that happens to be in the ocean that holds many different secrets and mysteries at the bottom is to hear that we have found tracks, but we don't know what's causing these tracks. In December of 2018, a team of explorers and scientists decided to finally take a trip down to the bottom to see all there is to find at the bottom of the Great Blue Hole. We'll talk about this expedition a lot today, so remember it. Erica Bergman, who was the chief submarine pilot on the expedition and who is an oceanographer explained that they had observed tracks at the bottom of the sinkhole but that they were unable to identify them and that they remain quote open to interpretation. This alone isn't the most terrifying thing there but when we take in some of the other things we know about the hole like how it's the second largest marine sinkhole in the world or how there could potentially be an entire cave system lurking somewhere in there, more on that later by the way, things start to get a little more unsettling. It quickly it becomes clear that these mystery tracks are only a drop in the bucket of the mysteries of the Great Blue Hole. In our number 9 spot today we have stalacites. The Great Blue Hole is a really popular diving destination despite the fact that divers obviously can't go all the way to the bottom for a multitude of reasons. When diving here you definitely need quite a bit of experience beforehand and for those lucky ones who have done the work they might be able to get just deep enough to see the incredible stalacites this sinkhole holds. While these are gorgeous just to look at, they are part of the reason that we know some of the most ancient history behind this place at all. Stalacites are only formed when water is dripping down stone. This gave scientists the insight they needed to realize that this wasn't always a place that was submerged in water. In fact, they concluded that this was actually a big, dry cave and one of the most prolific eras in the history of our beautiful planet. This means that at some point there was probably a ton of stuff living in it. They believed that the cave likely formed during during the last ice age, so sometime prior to 14,000 years ago, but at the end of the ice age it ended up flooding, collapsing, and thus we have the great blue sinkhole. In our number 8 spot today we have movements. This is one that really ties into the last one with the discovery of the stalacites. Of course when they first found them they took some samples so that they would be able to confirm their above sea formation and when doing this analysis it was realized that not only did they form above sea level but that some of them were off vertical by about 5 degrees and that these changes were consistent. This gave another very valuable insight into the history of this location and led scientists to the conclusion that there must have been some past geological shift or tilting of the plateau underneath at some point. This event would have been followed by a long period of relative stillness. This change in the stalacites showed us that the land must have been moving as well, not just the sea level rising. It's not the most unsettling thing on this list, but it certainly is cool. It's really amazing how such a small change can show us so much. In our number 7 spot today we have trash. It has become abundantly clear that there really isn't any place on earth that is free from human influence and that most definitely includes our litter. If trash can make it to the deepest depths on earth in the challenger deep, of course trash can somehow find its way down to the bottom of the big blue hole. During that 2018 expedition we spoke about earlier, the team stumbled across more than they were expecting when they found a littered 2 liter coke bottle, I'm glad it wasn't Pepsi, and they also found a lost GoPro. They were even able to see that this GoPro still contained some vacation photos. Safe to say that it's not the most remarkable discovery they made down there, but it should be something that might be a little concerning to us all. In our number 6 spot today we have sand. Like I mentioned before, this sinkhole obviously has an incredibly rich history and we are just starting to learn about the things that it holds, but it takes time, equipment, and money to really be able to have these sorts of large expeditions like the one in 2018. There might be fossils or other things just waiting to be uncovered that we don't even know about yet. 
but the clock is ticking. As it turns out, as quickly as the blue hole appeared, it might also be disappearing. Apparently there are waterfalls of sand that are continually falling into the hole and it's slowly but surely being filled up. It's like a real, very large, kind of scary hourglass, essentially. At least it's not something that's gonna happen overnight, so for now we still have time to admire its beauty and take a look at all of the mysteries it might be holding. Maybe it just serves as a reminder that nothing is permanent, except for the internet. In our number five spot today, we have more caves. So remember Erica Bergman we talked about before in the first one? She was the one who like led the expedition in 2018, the submarine pilot. Well, she didn't only talk about mysterious tracks. She also explained that there is an enormous cavern close to the bottom of the hole. Like a huge unexplored cavern in the middle of a huge mysterious marine sinkhole. I'm just saying, that's more mystery than I can handle. This means that there could potentially be a large underwater cave cave system and the great blue hole is just the beginning of it. She said, quote, the roof has collapsed on this particular cave, but the whole reef could be dotted with similar caverns which simply haven't collapsed into blue holes yet. Who knows what these cave systems could be hiding? Undiscovered species? Answers to some of the ocean's mysteries? The possibilities really are endless. In our number four spot today, we have marine life. So of course, this stunning location is a popular tourist attraction. People really wanna dive here and I absolutely cannot blame them. But one thing you may encounter, should you choose this as your next adventure spot, are sharks. There are a few different species of sharks that enjoy calling the waters around the Blue Hole home. They include bull sharks, Caribbean reef sharks, and hammerhead sharks. Surprisingly, these sharks aren't even at the top of the concerns list when it comes to diving here, as shark attacks truly are quite rare. Sharks are pretty gentle creatures and were not their favorite thing to snack on, but they are big, they are powerful, and they can do a lot of damage when the going gets tough or when they feel frightened or threatened, and that is just one of the many, many reasons that this is an area that hopes for more experienced divers rather than a place someone would recommend for their first solo dive. In our number three spot today, we have nitrogen. Another thing you will likely encounter should you choose to go diving here is something that is actually quite common for those who like to venture and dive in the deep sea. We are talking about nitrogen narcosis. Basically, divers of course use oxygen tanks to help them breathe underwater. These tanks normally don't just contain oxygen, they contain a mix of oxygen, nitrogen, and some other gases as well. This is all fine and well, but the deep sea is not like our lives up here. After about 100 feet, the increase in pressure can alter these gases, and to be honest, the further you go, the more the pressure increases. When these altered gases are inhaled, they can have unusual sort of intoxicating effects on the body. This is something that people who choose to dive here will experience, and it can be disorienting to say the very least. These effects are reversible and should wear off when you get to shallower water, but when you begin to feel the effects, it won't be at the time you're ascending. Your dive instructor will likely be only leading you deeper into the waters. This is all just a long way of saying it's a step you need to be aware of and prepared for. In our number two spot today, we have toxicity. So the simplest way to put this is that at the bottom of the great blue hole, it is poisonous. After you get about two thirds of the way down to the bottom, the water is just full of hydrogen sulfide. This means that there is little to no oxygen left down there, which is exactly why any marine creatures that get stuck down there are sure to meet a gruesome fate, but it is also why the water is actually toxic and corrosive. If you get deep enough without the proper protection, this hole will kill you and any other living thing that goes in it. It is truly unforgiving. Some of the experts in that 2018 expedition said that there were thousands of remains of marine life, like conches, which is a result of these creatures just getting a little too close to the edge. One explorer even said that you could see little prints where the conches presumably were trying to climb back up before being asphyxiated by the toxic water. Yeah, so basically while it looks beautiful on the surface, the Great Blue Hole is just a macabre marine life cemetery. In our number one spot today, we have remains. By far the most unsettling of all of the discoveries on this list are the bodies of two divers that were found during this 2018 expedition. There have been three divers who are known to have gone missing after going diving in the Great Blue Hole, and to be honest, we aren't sure which two were found or exactly how they died. The reason for this is because, despite the fact that they were found, authorities decided that the best thing to do would be to leave them. Of course, rescue is a complicated process, but they agreed and decided that 
quote, they're at peace where they are. It serves as a reminder of how dangerous it can be, even for those with all of the experience necessary. Mm -hmm.